The story begins with the guy sleeping on the bed with fresh air blowing from the window and he felt this pleasant coolness from the street. The guy suddenly opened his eyes and thought, was it really him and couldn't understand how he got there and what really happened. The guy looked at his hands and realized that it was him and he was alive and felt very good and he really liked it as before. The guy realized that he was not mistaken and he was reborn and now he was there on earth again and he was glad to know that he could live in this world. This guy's name was Yi Tian, and for 600 years in this world, Yi Tian had been a cultivator and had always cultivated and practiced there. So Yi Tian stole a divine stone from the treasury of the strongest clan on this land of ten thousandths of heaven and was then glad. But as soon as Yi Tian approached immortality, he was immediately mortally wounded and died before even reaching his monastery. But Yi Tian was the happiest man on earth because God was merciful and he gave him another chance so that he too could live. His body has weakened and his Dao Tian has completely dried up and in his previous life he made many mistakes but now everything will be different in this life. Now Yi Tian's reward was removed and he closed his eyes and began to remember his past life and his past deeds without haste. Yi Tian realized that he had returned and he would definitely not allow the old tragedies to repeat, and in this life everyone would answer him with their blood for everything. And at that very second, Yi Tian heard some sounds on the street and this immediately distracted his attention and he wanted to see what was happening there. Yi Tian looked through the window and saw that in front of his house there was an elite car and people got out of it and walked somewhere together. The man told Zihan that he would like to invite her to a night party on Tinglong Mountain and he was simply honored to have her there. Zihan told Shang Rong that he knows how to communicate with ladies and even invited her to such a luxurious party, and Yi Tian was a beggar. Yi Tian watched all this through the window and thought that it was Wang Zihan and in his past life he was very in love with her. Yi Tian thought that a lot had been done for the sake of hopeless love, but in response there was nothing and he wondered if she was worthy of his sorrow. Shang Rong told Zihan that her fiancé still looked madly in love and asked if their feelings were not mutual with the fiancé. Wang Zihan asked which groom he meant and was this Yi Tian really worthy of her and for her he was an annoying pathetic dog. And at that moment, Wang Zihan shouted out the window and told Yi Tian that she forgives him and asked him to quickly go downstairs to the girl. Yi Tian said hello to Wang Zihan and asked her why she was screaming so much and said that he was there and he was still Yi Tian. Shang Rong's friends told him that he had already invited them to the party and why did they need this Yi Tian because he was an ordinary beggar guy. Friends said that only influential personalities are allowed to enter the villa on Mount Tenglo and they should not lose face. Shang Rong told Yi Tian that he was dressed like a beggar and said that he would not be allowed into Tengul Villa and asked if he understood this and what was wrong. Yi Tian told Shang Rong that he didn't care and remembered that he beat him because of Zihan and 600 years have passed but his heart remembers the pain. Wang Zihan got angry and told Yi Tian that he must be there and asked him to dress more decently and said that he was disgracing her. Shang Rong started laughing and told Wang Zihan that she said everything correctly and he agreed 100% with her words. Yi Tian thought that, unlike Shang Rong, he does not have noble roots and why is he needed there and they will laugh at him at the party. Shang Rong said that he had clothes in his trunk that did not fit his brother and he could wear these clothes and they were expensive. Yi Tian refused this offer and told Shang Rong that they were already late and they had better go on this journey quickly. Shang Rong thought how dare he argue with him and as if he himself wanted to dress him up and Yi Tian would be different at the party. Yi Tian thought that if he was not mistaken, what would happen at Tengul Villa would make a deep impression on all the guests in the villa. Some time later, they arrived at Mount Tengul and saw that a respectable man was standing in front of the building, guarding this place. People said that it was Mr. Ma Wen and he is under the head of the golden titan Mr. Hu San and his capital is tens of millions. People said that after all, Brother Shang was a very respected person and otherwise how could he get to the meeting of such respected people. Yi Tian realized that the aura of the earth had dried up, but its energy there was much stronger and this would give him a chance to quickly cultivate his power. And then Yi Tian heard Shang Rong call him to him and asked him to come to him as quickly as possible and he had an important conversation with him. Shang Rong asked Mr. Ma to let him introduce his friend Yi Tian and he was not at all like them and very different from everyone else. Shang Rong said that this was the son of a respected mister and he was the head of the organizational part of Dongman County and was cool. 
Mr. Ma Wen told Shang Rong that this man's status simply leaves much to be desired and asked him to quickly leave there for business. Wang Zihan thought that it was a disgrace and she knew from the very beginning that he should not be taken there and he only disgraced them all there. Wang Zihan ran to Shang Rong and asked them to wait for her and said that they were walking too fast and she couldn't keep up with them. Shang Rong gave Wang Zihan a ticket and said that this was an entrance ticket to the party and she could only get there with this ticket. Shang Rong told Zihan that without a ticket, even if she was the most beautiful nymph on earth, she still wouldn't be able to get to this party. And then Shang Rong told Yi Tian that he completely forgot about him and took only one ticket and he can wait at the hotel until they find a ticket. Yi Tian asked Shang Rong not to bother himself and asked the guys to have a good time there and he would do something else and have fun. Yi Tian thought that he would rather die than take something from Shang Rong's hands and he doesn't care about them and would rather cultivate now. Yi Tian realized that now there is a barely perceptible aura on the earth and it will be like this for eight years, but with the heavenly stone the air aura of the earth will be cleared. Yi Tian thought that no one would wipe their feet on him anymore and Shang Rong and people like him would still pay for all their actions. Yi Tian found a cozy place there and thought that this place was very quiet and calm and the aura there was acceptable and it suited him very well. Yi Tian made sure that there was no one there and sat down there and began cultivating and he gained strength and purified his qi energy to become stronger. Yi Tian thought that he had been a cultivator for 600 years and he would start with the true basics and later the result of his training would be noticeable. Yi Tian remembered that there are only eight realms of development and this is the construction of the foundation, the creation of the core, the birth and expulsion of the soul. Yi Tian thought that there were four more kingdoms of development and this is the search for Tao, gaining immortality, the kingdom of antiquity and at the end the kingdom of Tao. Yi Tian remembered that in his previous life he almost managed to gain immortality, but it turned out that all his kingdoms were too vicious. And a demon settled in Yi Tian's body and destroyed the heart of Tao, and he sat and felt how he began to develop and regain his qi. Yi Tian sat and he felt his energy emanating to the neighboring plants and he felt close to pure nature and the clear sky. And Yi Tian remembered that then he died, but life again opened its gates to him and now his body was freed from the demon. Yi Tian realized that he would have to start his cultivator's path by building a foundation and there was no necessary stone in his Tao heart. Building the foundation consists of four stages and clearing the aura is the most difficult technique and before he was so afraid of not being able to cope with it. Yi Tian realized that the qi condensed to form the base and with the help of ten-sided refining, he could absorb the aura more effectively. A couple of hours passed and Yi Tian thought that he had been cultivating for half a day already and he thought that this was enough to establish the foundation and strength. Yi Tian opened his eyes and thought that he could already clearly feel how all the unnecessary particles were leaving his body and he was getting better. Thanks to the heavenly stone and the ten-sided aura refining, Yi Tian realized that the speed of his development was becoming increasingly incomprehensible. Yi Tian realized that all he had left was to check the entire result of all these trainings and understand whether he had become better than then. Yi Tian clenched his fist and realized that he needed to hit something to make sure that his strength and power increased after that. And at that moment, Yi Tian found a huge stone and hit the stone with all his might and it had powerful energy and it didn't hurt him at all. Yi Tian then noticed that after the blow, he left a huge mark of his fist on this stone and it did not live up to expectations. Yi Tian wondered if he couldn't split the stone and that means that this is not enough and he must continue his training. Yi Tian realized that he must find a place where the concentration of aura is higher and something else is needed for him to continue cultivating. And at that same second, Yi Tian heard someone behind him say that it was an aura, and he was surprised and thought who could have approached him from behind like that. Yi Tian turned around and noticed that there was a girl standing behind him and there were many people next to her and they very quietly approached him now. The girl told Yi Tian that she was on the ground where the aura had almost dried up, there were still cultivators left and it was unexpected. Yi Tian looked at this girl and said that this was not an aura and she was very simply mistaken in her beliefs and there were no cultivators there. Yi Tian realized that the girl has cold energy and purine power, and if the owner of such energy engages, he will enter some kind of kingdom. Yi Tian told the girl that on earth the energy of cold was a reason for boasting and for some it was even a disease and he felt sorry. 
The man next to the girl asked who Liner that some nasty guy had occupied her territory and asked if he could drive this guy away. Hu Liner stopped Yushan and said that she was afraid that he was not his opponent and asked him to try not to look for unnecessary problems. Yushan told Hu Liner that he had already realized that he was not so simple and he would try to find out more and he was skinny and one blow would be enough for him. Yushan thought that he understood Hu Liner well and his heart belonged to her and he wanted to impress her and ordered Yi Tian to stand up. Yi Tian opened his eyes and asked Yushan what he needed from him and asked not to disturb him if he didn't need anything urgently right now. Yushan asked Yi Tian if he knew martial arts, would he like to test himself in sparring and everything would be fair according to the rules. Yi Tian was surprised by this and told Yushan that he knows very little about martial arts and gladly accepts his challenge. Yi Tian wondered if he had voluntarily challenged a very experienced cultivator to a duel, and he could hardly restrain himself from laughing. People asked brother Yushan why he challenged him to a duel and didn't he remember the last time he broke his enemy's spine. People said that Yushan studied kickboxing and wrestling from the very beginning, and when the leader came out against you, he knocked him out in seconds. Hu Liner told them that this was a very ordinary fight and they should just exchange experiences and not overstep the boundaries and not injure. Yushan asked Hu Liner not to worry and said that he would not beat him too much and asked her to just watch him win. Yi Tian told Yushan that it was enough to talk and it was time for them to start sparring and he was completely ready for this fight with such a fighter. Yushan swung his hand and ordered Yi Tian to prepare for death and at this time just pray that he does not accidentally go to the next world. Yi Tian remembered that in his past life, he often provoked such cultivators and quickly put these arrogant people in their place. And at that same second, Yi Tian swung and struck a strong blow at his opponent Yushan, and he flew far to the other side from the blow. All of Yushan's people froze in surprise and couldn't believe their eyes and how this impudent stranger managed to hit his brother like that. Yushan fell to the ground right in front of his people and now he could no longer get up to continue and he was in pain. Hu Liner looked at this and was shocked and wondered if Yi Tian had defeated Yushan with one blow and he was just an incredible person. After a couple of minutes, Yushan was finally able to get up and he realized that everything was bad and he had just screwed up in front of his Hu Liner. And at that very second, Yushan suddenly began coughing up blood and everyone was horrified to see such a sight and quickly ran to help. People asked Yushan's brother if he was okay and if he felt sick and asked if maybe they should call an ambulance. Yushan understood that everything was very bad and he needed to do something to rehabilitate himself in front of his beloved Hu Liner. Yi Tian looked at the beaten Yushan and wondered if he still hadn't admitted defeat and how he wanted to continue the fight after such a thing. Yi Tian realized that this would not work and he should stumble and Yushan would immediately take advantage of this to take revenge on him for this obvious defeat. But at that moment Yi Tian looked down and froze in surprise and thought what was happening there and why did it start only now. Everything around Yi Tian began to glow and a bright blinding beam appeared that people could not just look at and it blinded them. People were shocked by this and thought what was going on there and maybe the wise who liner knew the answer to this interesting question from their team. People started screaming and waited for this phenomenon to end and they could quickly go home and rest after such events. And after a couple of minutes everything calmed down and these bright rays stopped blinding these people and they were able to calm down after such stress and fear. Yi Tian stood and was not at all happy about this event and he realized that it was too wasteful and he made a mistake for which he might pay. Yi Tian had just entered the middle period of qi development, but due to insufficient control, the aura leaked just across the ground. Yu Shan also looked at it and asked what it was just now because he himself could not explain it in ordinary words and was waiting for an explanation. And now Yu Shan realized that their difference in strength was too big, and he just recently dreamed of settling scores with this guy. Hu Liner and her team bowed and said that they did not know that the master was so strong and asked for forgiveness for their mistake. Yi Tian said that this is just an exchange of experience and he is not angry with them, but even so, why do he and his team call him this master? Hu Liner told Yi Tian that the power of Shao Chen has now awakened in him and therefore he has the right to be called a master and they are proud of such a master. Yi Tian thought about how Xiao Chen's power could have awakened and whether there were still cultivators left on earth and he was curious and asked. Hu Liner said that this is internal strength and this is the peak of development, but she knows little since she has not yet seen a person with Xiao Chen's strength. 
Yi Tian thought that it seems that people with such power are very rare now, but he needs to quickly reach the limit of his skills. Hu Liner said that the one in whom Xiaochen's power originated becomes cruel and domineering and wondered if now he would kill them all. The entire Hu Liner team was waiting for Yi Tian's answer and they were very afraid that he would not forgive them for insulting him and would not give them a choice. But Yi Tian thanked her for the information and asked for forgiveness for being so silent and said that he needed to think about everything now. Hu Liner and all her friends exhaled and thought that they were afraid in vain and the master was kind and fortunately he forgave them and would let them go home. Hu Liner gave Yi Tian something and asked him to accept a modest gift as their apology, and Yi Tian immediately asked what it was. Hu Liner said that this is a platinum pass to a party at Tinglong Villa and with such a pass no one will say anything to him in the villa. Yi Tian thought that this girl seemed to have a special influence on Tinglong Mountain and was curious to see Shang Rong's face. Yi Tian asked the girl if her name was Hu Liner and she said that he was right and asked the master what he wanted from her and he would help him. And at that moment, Yi Tian looked straight into Hu Liner's eyes and asked that her aura was cold poison and whether he was right in his guesses. Hu Liner heard the master's question and froze in surprise and did not know that she could answer such an interesting question. Yushan asked Hu Liner what this guy was talking about and did he really mean her cold energy and why did he call this technique that way. Hu Liner said that just by looking at her once, the master was able to find out the cause of her illness and she realized that he was indeed very strong. Hu Liner asked Yi Tian if she had the right to find out the name of the master because she was very curious and he made an incredible sensation. Yi Tian looked at the starry sky and told Hu Liner that he would now tell his name if she wanted to know it and would not hide it. And at that very second the master said that his name was Yi Tian and he was glad to meet them and it was a good experience for him to fight with them. Yi Tian told Hu Liner that his ancestor suffered from the same illness as her and it was caused by cold poison and that's why he knew about it. Hu Liner listened to the master's words and wondered if there was a way to recover from this disease and she had hope for salvation. Hu Liner said that cold poison was removed from her mother's womb and then one doctor said that she would not live even 20 years of life. Hu Liner asked the master if he could help and he asked her not to worry and said that he could heal her from this disease. Hu Liner was very happy and told the master that if he saves her, she will do whatever the master wishes and he will be very happy. Yushan asked Hu Liner not to do this and she called him an idiot and said that she agreed to everything and he was thinking about completely different things. Yi Tian thought what kind of conceit was this and he had seen many fairies and goddesses and refused everyone but Liner had such a natural charm. Master Tian told Hu Liner that he would help her but he needed time to prepare and thought it might take several days. Hu Liner said thank you to the master and hoped that he would leave her the phone number and since such a thing she wanted to invite the master to dinner. Yi Tian told Hu Liner that there was no point in doing this, and besides, he had already had a meeting with his classmates at Tinglong Villa for a long time. And at that very second, Master Yi Tian threw some kind of leaf towards Hu Liner and she thought what it was and why he left her the leaf. And taking this piece of paper in her hands, Hu Liner saw that the master had written his phone number there and she was glad that he didn't just leave. After that, Yi Tian began to leave there and asked Hu Liner to just call him in a week and then everything would be fine and quickly. Hu Liner asked Yushan if he knew anything about these people with whom Master Tian wanted to meet now and she was so interested. Yushan said that the students of the Renwan school gathered at the Ten Gun Villa and there seemed to be a couple of them there and Shan Rong provided passage there. Yushan told Hu Liner that they somehow didn't interest him and he couldn't think that information about them would be important to anyone. Hu Liner called Ma Wan and asked him to tell the chef to prepare the most luxurious table for the students of Renwan school. At this time, Yi Tian was walking around these places and then he heard a rumbling in his stomach and realized that he was very hungry and needed to eat. Yi Tian remembered that he had not eaten anything since the morning and so much time had already passed and his stomach wanted to get at least some food. And at that moment Master Tian smelled a very tasty smell and realized that this smell was simply attracting him and he could not resist it. Master Tian ran towards the smell and thought that he had already forgotten what hunger was, but this smell beckons him so much that he couldn't resist. After that, Yi Tian came to the party and the guards told the guest that he could go inside because he had the best pass. The guards asked each other who this village guy was and where he got the platinum pass, which not everyone had. 
A friend told the guard that a smart person will never show his true colors and asked his friend if he understood what he was talking about. Master Tian entered the restaurant and realized that these eyes were looking at him in surprise, but it was impossible to react immediately. Master Tian saw that there was a free seat next to Zihan and decided that he would sit there because he had not seen any other seats there yet. He walked up to the table where his girlfriend Zihan was sitting and she was so surprised to see Yi Tian there and asked how he got to the party. Zihan told Tian that he could sit there otherwise he would start hanging around there and his mother asked her to take care of him in this place. A friend asked Tian to convince her parents to refuse marriage with Zihan, and this agreement was concluded in her young childhood. Master Tian got very angry and hit the table and said that he was not going to chase Wang Zihan and she was not needed that much. Qian said that secondly, their family's agreement is a mere trifle and if it does not suit them, then they can terminate the engagement at any time. The friend told Zihan that Tian had said that the engagement could be broken and why was she afraid and hadn't done it all this time. Wang Zihan told her friend that she would tell her about it, but not there because they were sitting in a public place and it was somehow uncomfortable. Yi Tian asked Zihan if she really thinks that he doesn't hear her and that only the memory of her mother's help then keeps him from breaking up. And at that moment Master Tian heard people talking next to him and he heard a familiar voice and realized that it was Shang Rong. Shang Rong stood next to some man and told elder brother Yu what kind of meeting it was and he thought that he would not come there. Brother Yu told Shang Rong that he came there for a couple of glasses of wine and asked them all to continue to have fun and not stop. But Shang Rong didn't want to go anywhere and asked brother Yu to let him drink to him because he really respected his brother as a bright personality. But brother Yu shouted and told Shang Rong to leave and said that he only needed Master Tian and asked where he could find this man. Yi Tian at this time was sitting at the table and eating food and enjoying it because he could finally taste delicious food and his stomach was satisfied. Shang Rong couldn't believe his ears and asked brother Yu who he was looking for because he didn't hear his words very well and didn't understand the question. Brother Yu told Shang Rong that he would repeat it again and he was looking for this master Yi Tian but first he wanted to drink to master Ye's health. The people in the restaurant didn't understand who Brother Yu was talking about and what the master forgot there and why they still didn't know this man. And at that moment Yi Tian raised his hand and said that he was there and Yu Shan could approach him and not be shy and all the people were shocked. Shang Rong asked Tian if he was really tired of life and had gone completely crazy and how dare he talk to Brother Yu Shan like that. But suddenly Yu Shan slapped Shang Rong and asked who he was to address this master Tian so disrespectfully. All the people were perplexed and thought how such an influential person knew such a worthless guy and it was like a dream. Shang Rong did not understand what was happening there and how the idiot knew such an influential person and he wanted to get closer to brother Yu. Yu Shan approached Master Yi Tian and said that he had finally been able to find him and the master asked him to sit down and talk to him. But at that moment something distracted Tian's attention and he looked to the side and realized that all the guards of this Shang Rong were standing behind him. Yi Tian thought about what they needed from him and suddenly they shouted and said that Master Tian is the best person on planet Earth. Master Tian looked and noticed that all the guards bowed to him and it was strange because recently they considered him just an idiot. Yu Shan raised his glass and asked Master Tian to let him drink for him as a sign of his serious respect for Master Tian. Yu Shan immediately raised his glass and drank the entire contents to the bottom and he was glad that he met such a great person as Tian. Master Tian also drank with him and thought that thanks to Yushan, all the people now respected him and now everything has changed a lot. He stood up and told the master that today he taught him Yushan a good lesson in hopes that in the future they will contact him again. Yushan told the master that his glass was now empty and asked him to let him leave and after that he left this restaurant. A friend asked Wang Zihan why she didn't tell her that Tian was respected so much and he was such an important person among them. Wang Zihan was surprised and asked Tian what kind of relationship there was between him and Yushan and why he respected him so much now. Master Tian told Zihan that, unfortunately, he could not tell her anything and said that he himself had known Yushan for less than a day and did not know much. Shang Rong's people told the boss that they were worried, but in fact, Tianya and Yushan were brought together by chance and would soon separate them. Shang Rong smiled and thought about what he should do with this Yi Tian and realized that his new acquaintance should not be as afraid as everyone thinks. 
Shang Rong thought that Yu Shan is good but not the same student and he is not stronger than Ma Wan and he has good connections and is now on his side. Shang Rong told all the people that nothing unusual happened and they should not pay attention to this student and he was ordinary. Shang Rong asked his man to look at his face and hide the mark of the slap as quickly as possible and not disgrace him there. Shang Rong's man said that today was definitely not his day and left as quickly as possible from there and thought about what to do with his face. Yi Tian thought that Teng Long would remember this boy for a long time and a very interesting show would soon begin and he was looking forward to it with joy. Rong's man was walking along the corridor of the restaurant and noticed that a very beautiful girl appeared in front of him and he could not take his eyes off. The man looked at her from the back and thought that he did not know that such beautiful girls existed in this world and was glad to meet. The man was very happy and thought that although he had just received a slap in the face, he unexpectedly met this beautiful girl there. The man thought that she looked like a simpleton and now, without any doubt, he would approach her and meet this sweet lady. The man immediately came close to the girl and said that she was beautiful and he wanted her to become his girlfriend forever. But instantly the man received a slap in the face for the second time that day and thought that he didn't think that she would be offended because he was polite. The girl called him a bastard and asked how he dares to spread his dirty hands and how he is not ashamed of such terrible behavior. The man was very angry that no one wanted to communicate with him and did not show respect to him and he thought that she would answer for her words. And then suddenly the man hit this girl with all his might and from such a blow she fell to the floor and screamed and was in great pain. The man called her a fool and asked what she allows herself to do and thinks she's so cool and asked if she wants to hit him again. The girl was lying on the floor and recovering from the blow, and the man thought that he had nothing more to do there and went to the boss. The girl immediately pulled out her phone and called her father and thought that this scoundrel would regret it and remember this day for a long time. The girl told her father that his beloved daughter was beaten by a scoundrel and said that he should answer for this and the father was furious with this. The man returned to the boss and said that there was something wrong with this world and he came across a very unpleasant woman there and she seemed nice. The man told the boss that he hit her because he could not tolerate such impudence from her and it was not for nothing that he had been involved in boxing and karate for so many years. Shang Rong said that this is nothing and they have nothing to worry about because Ma Wan is on their side and even Mr. Dong cannot do anything to them. The man told Shang Rong that he said everything correctly and they have nothing to fear and no one can defeat Ma Wan and even this Mr. Dong. Shang Rong said that only an idiot would risk going against them and even though Don owns all the centers of Inzhong, he is still not a hindrance to them. Yi Tian thought that Shang Rong and the others might have laughed, but he is afraid that they will no longer have such an opportunity in a minute. And a couple of minutes later someone kicked the front door and entered the restaurant with a roar and all the people were surprised who this unexpected person was. And at that moment many people armed with a bat entered the restaurant and everyone was scared when they saw them and realized that they were definitely bandits. Shang Rong immediately stood up and told these people that this was a private party and where was their pass and how could they get in without him. But the most powerful man told Shang Rong to get out of the way and if he doesn't understand well then it's a disaster and stood in front of his man. The man asked these men to get away from him and asked his brother Shang Rong to help him deal with these people because he was tough. Shang Rong ordered them to immediately release his friend and at first they all burst in there and now they grabbed his friend and how to understand all this. Shang Rong's man asked the men if they heard him and told them to remove their hands otherwise they would greatly regret contacting Shang Rong. But the man got angry and slapped Shang Rong's man in the face and made him understand that he might not believe it, but he would now finish him there. Shang Rong ordered the men to stop and said that if they did not do this, they would really regret this decision. Shang Rong thought that he should not interfere in this conflict, otherwise he risks losing his prestige and his authority in circles. Shang Rong's people began to move towards these men and told them to be ready and that they would now receive what they deserved for their arrogance. And at that moment, a fight immediately began between Shang Rong's people and these men and they beat each other without stopping and without mercy. And after some time, Shang Rong's people defeated these people with difficulty and thought that they were very strong and could not compare with them. Wang Zihan was very happy and said that it was very cool and they killed everyone so quickly and she was very proud of Shang Rong. Tian asked really everyone and said that he would not rush to rejoice and said that these are ordinary sixes and all the fun is just beginning. 
Wang Zihan's friend told Tian that he could speak because he himself had just been sitting all this time and hadn't even lifted a finger in the fight. The man stood up and called all the students bastards and said that they would still answer for this and it would happen faster than they might think. Rong asked if he was calling his friends and he was curious what his best friends were made of and he wanted to see them in person. And then the man called on the phone and told Mr. Don that they were now at Tinglong Villa and told all the information about everything. The man said that this runt who beat his daughter was also there and Shang Rong froze in surprise and was shocked to hear about this Don. Shang Rong wondered if this blonde freak from his team had insulted the daughter of Mr. Don himself and was he really such an obvious idiot. And a few minutes later the front door opened and all the people realized that the end had come for these students and this was a big disaster. A lot of people went to the restaurant and all the guests of the restaurant got up from their seats to say good evening to this person personally. And then all the people bowed and said good evening to Mr. Don and said that they were very glad to meet such a person in person. Mr. Don asked all the people who dared to touch his daughter and asked the cowards where their courage had gone and where was their courage. Shang Rong asked Mr. Dong for forgiveness and asked him to just not be angry and said that his father is the leader of the Baoguan group Shang Zhenyang. But Mr. Don grabbed Shang Rong by the scruff of the neck and asked the bastard how he dared to insult his daughter and he would not leave this villa alive. Shang Rong said that Mr. Ma Wan organized this party and if they respect him they should have let him go at that very second. Mr. Dong asked Shang Rong to wait and said that first he scolded him with his father and now with Ma Wan and it seems that he was afraid of him. Mr. Don exhaled and thought that it looked like this stupid student still didn't understand who he was messing with and thought that he was an ordinary guy. Mr. Dong told Shang Rong that he would open his eyes and said that his father and Ma Wan were nothing compared to the head of Li Dong himself. Shang Rong was very frightened by these words and did not know what to do now and realized that he had serious problems and he made a mistake today. Wang Zihan asked why Shang Rong provoked Don himself and will Mr. Don now punish them all for this act of his. Yi Tian told Wang Zihan that he promised her mother to take care of her and so she should trust that he would not hurt her and would protect her. her Wang Zihan was surprised by Tian's words and thought that she could not have imagined that he was such a kind and loyal person. Tian thought that Shang Rong must have been unlucky this time but he will not budge until this whole situation affects Wang Zihan. Mr. Don's man approached the boss and told him about what had recently happened to them and who was really to blame for everything. Mr. Don shouted and asked the students if they really thought that if they beat up his guys, then they were cool and let them show their coolness. Mr. Don told the students that they would be in trouble and that they would make all their girls pay for their sins and take them into the house with them. And then Mr. Dong's man began to approach Wang Zihan and she began to scream and asked not to harm her and not to come there. Wang Zihan asked Mr. Dong to let her leave there and said that she had nothing to do with all these people. But at that very second, someone threw chopsticks onto the floor and threw them with such force that they stuck into the floor and were firmly stuck on the floor. Mr. Don's people looked at it and thought what was it and who could throw sticks with such force and it was incredible energy. And then Yi Tian told all Mr. Dong's people that he didn't want to interfere at all, but they forced him to do it and now everything. Tian stood right in front of Mr. Dong's people and they were waiting for some action from this guy, but he stood there motionless and calm. Mr. Don smiled and asked Tian who he thought he was and did he really believe that he could handle him and he was such a dreamer. Mr. Dong told Tian that he was very scared and he only asked him not to harm him and to spare all his people there. Wang Zihan looked at Tian and wondered if he was so scary that Boss Dong himself was scared of him and didn't want to fight him. Friend Zihan couldn't believe her eyes and how could Mr. Dong be afraid of such a weakling like Tian who was just a coward. Mr. Don asked what the hell was going on there and how did so many ignorant people gather in this place and it needed to be fixed quickly. Mr. Don asked his man named Sun Zi to teach this hero a good lesson so that he would no longer act so rudely. San Zi told Tian that they would play now and told Mr. Dong that he would gladly do it and was afraid that he would not offer it to him. San Zi was formerly an elite special forces soldier and he was capable of defeating more than a dozen soldiers and was the death of student Yi Tian. Tian realized that San Zi had brute strength and a strong body and he realized that it was time for him to test his abilities in practice and in real combat. And at that very second, San Zi swung and wanted to strike at Tian and said that now he would show him the technique of a real elite fighter. But to the surprise of all the people, 
Tian did not move anywhere and stood and waited for this fighter to strike and was not at all afraid of San Zi. And when San Zi almost brought his fist to Tian's face, he grabbed the fighter's hand and all the people did not believe that the man had such a powerful reaction. Sun Zi was shocked and wondered if this brat really stopped his blow and his blow was famous for the fact that it always reached the target. San Zi told Tian that he was not bad and said that it was even more interesting and finishing off the master was much more pleasant than some brat. And at that moment Sun Zi took out his knife and said that he could fight back his fists, but it was much more difficult to deal with the knife. Tian wondered if San Zi had taken out a bladed weapon and realized that he seemed to have overestimated him because he thought that he would give a serious rebuff. Tian smiled and asked San Zi if he really thought that his little toothpick could defeat him and if he himself believed in it. San Zi screamed and said that dead people would have no time for such conversations and attacked Tian with a knife in his hands and with aggression. San Zi continued to run towards Tian and said that now he could not hide anywhere and he did not need to pretend to be a hero. Tian looked straight into San Zi's eyes and did not move, and all the people thought that the student had gone crazy and had already resigned himself and was not protecting himself from the blow. Wang Zihan cried and could not look at how her defender was now deprived of his life and she was very upset for the kind student. Mr. Don looked at his fighter son Z and was very pleased and knew that he would never let him down and in difficult times he would defeat everyone. Shang Rong thought that Tian was too self-confident and now he will not be able to escape because of his arrogance and Mr. Dong will end him. But to the surprise of all the people, everyone saw San Z's knife fly away in the other direction and wondered if Tian could really escape from his attack. Suddenly, Mr. Don noticed that his fighter son Z was lying on the floor and writhing in pain and thought what could happen to such a warrior. Mr. Don asked Sun Z what happened there and why he still hadn't taken the life of that impudent Tian and why he was lying on the floor. Sun Z did not have the strength to get up, but he told Mr. Dong that he was fine and would now continue to fight with this guy Tian. Tian stood in bewilderment and thought that he didn't even strain and San Zi couldn't withstand even one blow from him and he's a strong fighter. Mr. Dong was furious and ordered all his men to attack Tian and finish him off and avenge their best fighter and brother Sun Zi. And then all of Mr. Dong's people began to run towards Tian and they wanted to impress their boss and be the first to finish off this insolent. Tian thought how low it was to attack by a crowd but said thank you for the fact that they decided to save his time and let him finish faster. And then one of Mr. Don's men ran up to Tian and struck him, but he felt great pain and his hand was injured. Tian thought that thanks to True Chi, his skin had become stronger than steel and now none of these people could cope with him. Mr. Dong looked at how strong Yi Tian was and wondered what was wrong with this man and why he was such a powerful fighter. All of Mr. Dong's people were screaming in pain and they no longer wanted to mess with Tian in this life and there was no point in continuing the fight. Mr. Dong told Tian that today he must understand that Healy Dong is not the one to challenge and he will soon prove it to him. Mr. Dong threw his glass on the floor and it shattered and the boss stood right in front of the impudent Tian and wanted to deal with him personally. Mr. Dong asked Tian if he wanted to fight and said that they would still fight and he would quickly tear him into a thousand small pieces. Yi Tian told Mr. Dong that they would see who would tear who else apart and he didn't want to talk anymore but just wanted to fight with him. And just as they wanted to start a fight, someone said what kind of impudence was this and who dared to organize fights in her villa and destroy everything there. And at that moment Yushan and Hu Liner appeared in front of them and she was clearly unhappy with what these invited guests had done there. Mr. Dong saw Miss Hu Liner and thought that she really came there to restore order and they were all afraid of this lady. Mr. Dong asked Hu Liner what she was doing there and said that he was just about to go to her but that scoundrel detained him there. Mr. Dong looked at Tian and thought that he would kill this scoundrel and he would pay for making him a fool in front of everyone. Master Tian was surprised and asked Hu Liner what she was doing there and he said that he was very glad to see her again but did not expect this meeting. Hu Liner told Tian that this was her villa and she came to personally say hello to him and said that in her presence no one would lay a finger on him. Mr. Dong was shocked and Hu Liner suggested that Master Tian have a drink together and forget about this misunderstanding and relax after all the work. Mr. Dong couldn't understand who Tian was and why Miss Hu Liner was so nice to him and where they could have met before this meeting. Master Tian asked Hu Liner how she knew Li Dong and he was interested in finding out more information about him. 
Hu Linner said that she and Li Dong are related, but her parents are much more influential, so how could she not know Li Dong after that? Li Dong asked Hu Linner for forgiveness and said that if he had known that he was her guest, he would never have allowed aggression against the master. Master Tian and Hu Linner just looked at Mr. Dong silently and he thought that they were definitely planning a harsh punishment for him. Mr. Don thought that it was in vain that he contacted this master, but how could he know that he would have such influential connections as Liner? And then Mr. Dong knelt down and told Master Tian that he was not himself and asked him for forgiveness for all his atrocities there. Tian thought that no one died, but someone was injured, but these were some little things and he proposed ending the feud on this note. Master Tian told Mr. Dong that he forgives him but asked him to never harm his friends or be aggressive again. Hu Linner told Mr. Dong to get away from there and Li Dong told Miss that he was already leaving there and wished him good night. Mr. Dong and all his people immediately ran away from there and Li Dong asked people not to push him and to open the exit door for him. Hu Linner told Master Tian that she again sincerely apologized and said that she would pay for all the damage caused to him. Master Tian told Hu Linner that everything was fine and said that there were too many ears and they would talk about it another time. Hu Linner told Master Tian that she understood him and they would discuss important matters with him some other time alone without these people. Hu Liner told Master Tian that then see you soon and immediately left this restaurant and Tian was pleased that it was all over. Tian thought that Zihan was safe and his mission was completed and it was time for him to go back home and rest after such an evening. Wang Zihan thought that Tian had always disgraced her, but now it seemed to her that something had changed in him and he had become a different person. The next day, Tian stood and looked at the luxury cars and talked with Wang Zihan about all the events of the past evening. Zihan asked Tian who Hu Linner was and why she suddenly helped him and even went against Mr. Dong himself. Tian told Zihan that they met Hu Linner yesterday and he said that she helped him and because she wanted to return the favor. Zihan asked Tian who he thinks she is and they have been living together for several days and it seems to her that he is clearly hiding something from her now. Tian smiled and thought that he never expected that Zihan would ask him about his friends like that and interrogate him. Tian asked Wang Zihan if she really wanted to say that he just couldn't help anyone and she froze in surprise at the question. Tian began to open the car and thought that he had long wanted to tell Wang Zihan about this but did not dare, and now the time has come. And then Tian told Zihan that he was leaving and from now on they were nobody to each other and she could continue to languish over trashy papers. Wang Zihan told Tian that he was an ungrateful scoundrel and she wanted to say something else, but Tian no longer listened to her words. After that, Yi Tian came to Yijong city and thought that there he needed to finish things quickly and then return home and go to bed. Tian understood that the development process was very slow and the qi in his soul was too little and he did not know what to do with it now. And at that very second, Yi Tian heard the rumbling in his stomach and realized that he was again very hungry and would eat anything. Tian thought that until he learned to feed on external energy, he had not been so hungry for a long time and he was ready to do anything for any food. Tian counted the money in his pocket and realized that there was very little of it and it might not even be enough for a hearty and nutritious meal. Tian realized that he should buy food, otherwise he would become the first cultivator in this story to die of starvation and it was not funny. But Tian thought that he must keep his word to Hu Liner and need to heal her and this money will be enough for Liner's medicine. A couple of minutes later, Tian came out of the pharmacy and bought a whole package of medicine with his last money and wanted to heal Hu Liner faster. Tian was wandering along a dark alley and suddenly he heard someone say that if he touched her, he would greatly regret it, no joke. Tian became interested and he thought what was still happening there and he should go there and look at the event with his own eyes. A girl in an alley asked the hooligans if they knew who she was and they said that she was beautiful and wanted to have fun with her. But the girl was not taken aback and gave one of them a strong slap in the face and he did not understand the moment of the blow and was confused by such an accurate blow. And then the bully grabbed the girl by the throat and said how dare she hit him in the face and she will now pay for this impudent act. The man told his friends that she was also daring and he liked girls with character and she was the ideal of his dreams and his dreams. The girl screamed and asked someone to help her, but she herself did not believe that someone would hear her and help her on this dark gloomy night. But after a couple of minutes, Tian appeared in front of the hooligans and told them to stop doing this and immediately release this innocent girl. Tian told the bullies that he didn't want to get his hands dirty on them, 
but if they didn't stop now, he would have to teach them some manners. The bully pushed the girl by the throat and told Tian to get out of there and said that it was none of his business and he could go home and not be smart there. Hooligans with knives asked Tian if he really imagined that he was a hero and asked the superhero to show them his super abilities. The girl asked Tian to run away from there and said that he alone could not cope with them and he must at least save his life today. Tian thought that this is so naive and he likes such impudent people who think that they are stronger, but although this is really not the case. All the hooligans were armed and they started running towards Tian and said that he was extremely unlucky today that he ran into them. But Master Tian dealt with all the hooligans with knives in one motion and headed towards the injured girl on the ground. The hooligans were very scared of Tian and said that they had better get out of there quickly before it was too late and this was not a person, it was a monster. Tian approached the girl and extended his hand to her and said that he was not dangerous for her and she could calm down and there was no danger at all. Tian told the girl that she was now safe, but asked her to never walk alone at night again because it was very dangerous. The girl gave Tian her hand and thanked him for saving her and he was glad that everything worked out and she wasn't seriously hurt. Tian told the girl that she reminds him of someone and it seems they have already met, but there is so much makeup on her face that it is difficult to understand. The girl asked Master Tian if he could give her his number so that she could later somehow thank him for such help. The girl told Tian that she had an offer and it would be nice if he helped her with her part-time job and he was surprised by this. The girl said that the bar where she works nearby does not have enough assistance and it was very close to this place. Tian thought about the bar and wondered if he would have time for coursework and the proposal was ideal, but he must cultivate. The girl told Tian that he would just stand at the bar for a couple of hours and it would not interfere with his studies and she guaranteed that. Tian told the girl thank you for such work but he still needs to think and he asked her what her name was. The girl said that her name was Lee Siyu and she was very glad to meet him and said that if he wanted to work he could come. Tian thanked Lee Siyu and said that his name was Yi Tian and he would remember her kindness and never forget the sweet lady. After these events, Tian returned to his rented apartment and thought that first he needed to cultivate to become stronger. Tian was sitting inside the rented apartment and he began to cast a spell and he even began to do something to his surprise. Tian thought that with the help of a miracle pill, the filled qi would begin to react with cold poison and help the poor man. Tian started receiving this pill and thought that it would help the patient get rid of the harmful symptoms and viruses in her body. Tian thought that ordinary herbs would not be enough and he needed to add some higher herbs for the pill to work successfully. Tian thought that the cooking process was going smoothly, but he was haunted by his empty wallet and it was very stressful for him. Afterwards, Tian sat on his bed and looked at the list of Rangan school students and remembered the past times. And looking at the names and surnames of all the students of this school, Tian noticed something very interesting that attracted his attention. Tian thought how could he forget about this and Li Suyu was the first beauty of the Rangan school and everyone ran after her then. Tian thought he was a school celebrity works in a night bar and goes to school during the day and it was very interesting for him. Tian thought about two sides of the same coin and he realized that he would still have to get a job in this bar to get to know her better. Tian was lying on the bed and was happy and thought that a lot of things in the new life were opening up from a different, more interesting side and that was cool. The next day, Tian came to this bar and thought that it looked like a good place and he could work there for a couple of months. Tian thought that an ordinary student runs a whole bar and Li Zhu was not so simple and she had leadership qualities. Tian thought that for now he would not give away his identity, because not only his safety but also that of other people depended on it. Yi Tian walked into this bar and saw Li Zhu sitting there and she was doing paperwork for this bar and was busy at that time. But as soon as Li Xiu saw Tian there, she was delighted and asked him to come to her and she had a conversation for him. Li Xiu asked Tian what he was up to and said that they are now very short of staff and he would really help them now. Tian smiled and told Li Xiu that he probably agreed and asked her to tell him what was required of him in this position. Li Xiu said that she was very glad that he agreed and asked him to follow her and said that now she would show him everything in this bar. A little later, Tian changed his clothes and appeared in this bar dressed as a waiter, and this was his job and he was happy with everything there. Tian wanted to start working, but suddenly he heard the workers say that boss Li Zhu has big problems. The waiters said that they heard Li Xiu cross Li Dong's path and he had no equal in cruelty in this city. 
And then the waiters noticed that Tian was eavesdropping and told him to get lost and start working since he was new to the bar. Tian told his colleagues that he listens to his colleagues and will do whatever his new work friends tell him to do. Tian was surprised and who would have thought that the imperial bar would have problems with Li Dong and he not only harmed him. At 11 at night, Tian finished his shift and Li Xiao said that she did not doubt him and this was his first salary. Tian told Li Xiao that there was no need to praise him so much and he was happy to help his old friend and was always ready for all work. Tian told Li Xiao that then they would meet tomorrow at work and she was glad that they now had such a new employee. Tian realized that something strange was happening inside him and he needed to return home as soon as possible and improve his health. A couple of minutes later, Tian was already at home and he quickly went into his room and he needed to figure out what was happening to him. Tian realized that the process of his cultivation had already been stopped and it was time for him to complete the last stage of qi development. And at that moment Tian opened his eyes and realized that there was something wrong there and he felt something strange in his room now. Tian realized that there was too little aura there that he needed so much now and he had to find more aura. Tian closed his eyes and thought that he should not be distracted and should complete his development without delay. And then his energy began to leave Tian's house beyond possible boundaries and it began to spread in this district. The energy continued to hover in the air in this area and Tian was very strong that everyone could feel his powerful energy. Tian opened his eyes and thought what kind of miraculous technique this was and he was able to absorb the slightest grains of aura and that's cool. Tian was very surprised and thought that even the aura of the moon succumbed to him and his development could no longer be stopped at this time. Tian closed his eyes and continued to absorb the energy of the moon and he felt all this energy and it was just an unforgettable sensation. Some time after the development, Tian stood up and thought that now he would feel whether he could become stronger and more powerful than before. And then Tian realized that energy was overwhelming him and it was great and he had never felt like such a healthy person. Tian was very proud of himself and at that very second someone called him on the phone and Tian thought who could call him at such a time. Tian saw that Li Dong was calling him and he was surprised and thought what he needed from him and he did not want to communicate with him. But Tian answered this call and asked Li Dong what he needed and why he called him at such a late time. Mr. Dong told Master Tian that he would like to ask him for help and hoped that he would not refuse him help. Tian was surprised because he never expected that Mr. Dong would call him and ask for help after everything that happened. Tian told Li Dong that as far as he remembers, their last meeting did not go so smoothly and why he asked him for help. Mr. Dong told Mr. Tian that he had a problem and Hu Linner told him that he could quickly solve the problem. Mr. Dong said that he could pay him and Tian thought that he doesn't need this snake's money but why is he so timid? Tian told Mr. Dong that he would help him and the next day he went to his fortress to talk with him. At the entrance to this building, Tian was met by many of Mr. Dong's people and they bowed and said that they were glad to see such a master there. And then Mr. Don himself began to leave the building and he told Master Tian that he was very glad to see him as a guest and that was great. Mr. Dong shook Master Tian's hand and said that he had come and honestly he did not expect that he would accept his offer after all the events. They entered the room together and all his people were waiting for Mr. Don in front of the entrance and they stood at attention in front of the boss and his guest. Tian sat down on the sofa and asked Mr. Dong what was the matter and why he called him over so urgently and what his problem was. Mr. Dong asked Master Tian to let him introduce Master Ingzhong to Yu Yunqing and he is also happy to meet him. Mr. Dong said that cultivators were very rare in their time and Tian greeted another strong master. The masters made tea and sat on the sofa to talk about matters of interest to everyone, and they waited there for a long time for Master Tian. Master Yingzhong Yunqing was drinking tea and Mr. Dong told Master Tian that they urgently needed to talk about a problem together. Mr. Dong asked Master Tian if the name Huang Zichiang meant anything to him and this name haunted him all this time. Mr. Dong told Master Tian that this master was from Yuzhong, the outskirts of Yingzhong, and his disobedience was causing a lot of trouble. Mr. Don said that this master's men beat his men and now he must avenge his loyal fighters. Tian did not believe these words and asked Mr. Dong if this was a joke because all his people were former special forces. Mr. Don said that this master's bugs would never defeat his tigers, but this scoundrel hired a master who beat the crowds. Yi Tian thought this was very interesting and asked Mr. Dong what he wanted him to do with the master. 
The master next to Tian was also waiting for an answer from Mr. Dong and he was wondering why masters like them were called there. Mr. Don took out a diplomat and asked the craftsman if this amount would be enough and he wanted to hire two craftsmen at once. And at that moment, Mr. Don's man opened the diplomat, there was a lot of money and other precious things. Master Tian's gaze fell on the grass that lay in this diplomat along with the money and he realized what kind of rare grass it was. Tian thought it was really ginseng and how rare it was and it was at least 2000 years old and it was very expensive. Tian thought that with this herb he could easily heal Hu Liner and even replenish his spiritual strength as a fighter. Master Tian told Mr. Dong that he really needed these herbs and asked if he could give him some of these herbs for friendship. And at that moment Master Tian put his glass on the table and another master saw it and didn't like something at all. The master told Tian that it was very noisy and next time he should be a little more careful in placing his dishes on the table like a master. But Master Tian just waved his hand and started using his technique to impress this old man who thinks he is strong. Master Tian looked carefully at one point in the room and many did not understand what he was going to do in the room. Master Tian moved his head to the side and Master In Zhong Yunqing realized that it was an airstrike technique and that's all. And at that same second a black spot appeared on the sofa and this was the result of the master's technique in action of his power. Master In Zhong Yunqing looked at Tian and thought that he had apparently only reached the flexible stage of qi development. But Master Tian looked at Master In Zhong Yunqing and realized that he was too arrogant and was not that strong. But then the guys came into the room and told Mr. Don that they couldn't cope with their people and decided to call the masters. People told Mr. Don if he really called two masters there at once and said that he could have forgotten it like a bad dream. The man told Mr. Dong that in all of Injong there would not be a person stronger than him and all the people would lose to him. The man looked at Tian and said that he was overwhelmed with inner strength and this was a very rare gift in the whole world at this time. Mr. Don told the man that how dare he break into his building so brazenly and said that he would be punished for his impudence. Mr. Dong told Master Tian and Master Yu that he was sorry that he dragged them into this showdown even though they themselves did not want it. Master In Zhong Yunqing told Mr. Dong that he was not going to work with this arrogant master in pairs and cope alone. Master In Zhong Yunqing what good will this guy be and he can handle all these boss enemies without any problems. And then Tian said that he would leave them and Master In Zhong Yunqing is much more capable than him and his help is not required. Mr. Don asked Master Tian not to leave there and two masters were better than one and he fully believed in his strength. And then Tian just sat there in the corner and watched how Master Yunqing dealt with all the people alone. Yi Tian thought that Master Yunqing was one development stage behind him and still turned up his nose as if he was better than everyone else. Master In Zhong Yunqing at this time approached his rival master and thought that he would now quickly deal with him. The master stood in front of Master In Zhong Yunqing and said that he was inferior to him and the first move and blow was for this master. Mr. Dong told Master In Zhong Yunqing that he must now win this fight so that once and for all this master will leave them behind. Yi Tian looked at all this and thought that now this Master Yunqing will learn the price of arrogance and after that he will become very humble. Master Yunqing wanted to attack this master's rival and thought that he was much stronger than him and would easily defeat him now. Master Yunqing found himself behind his enemy and said that he had already lost this battle and allowed the enemy to come so close to him. But the enemy master only looked at Master Yunqing and smiled, and he did not feel any danger from his fast and powerful attacks. The enemy immediately stepped aside and did not allow Master Yunqing to strike and said that it was too slow for the master. The opponent watched Master Yunqing's pitiful attempts to hit him and win this battle even though he knew it was impossible. And then the master began to shout at Master Yunqing and used his technique and thought that this should be enough to win. Master In Zhong Yunqing only covered his ears and he could no longer tolerate this sound and could not resist this experienced master. Master Yunqing fell to his knees and thought that it was just a shame and he had disgraced himself right in front of the boss Mr. Dong and his people. Master Yunqing sat on the floor and thought how was this possible and he did not know what kind of very dangerous technique it was to defeat them. The enemy simply looked at Master Yunqing and did not say anything because he understood that this battle was over and the master would not rise again. Master In Zhong Yunqing said that he underestimated his enemy and paid for it with defeat and now could not do anything to him. Mr. Dong asked Master Tian to be ready and said that he would soon start a fight with these masters and they were very dangerous. 
The master's accomplice from another city began to clap for his friend and said that it was incredible and that this master Yunqing was pathetic. The accomplice told Master Song that it was a good job and these scum from Injong are not even close to such a powerful master. The accomplice told Master Song that these weaklings should be afraid of them and they would not be able to do anything with their fighters and would only lose. But Yi Tian asked him to spare his ears and said that he did not agree with him at all and was he really so confident in the strength of these Yunzhong people. The man heard these words and froze in surprise and thought who dared to talk to them and he should be punished. The man asked Song Tian to teach this scoundrel a lesson, who was now pretending to be a tough guy and thought it was a lot of fun. Master Song Tian agreed with his brother and said that he would now quickly teach this impudent man a lesson and began to quickly approach him. Master Song Tian attacked Master Yi Tian and said that he would now taste a couple of his blows and tell him how they tasted. Yi Tian simply stood still and told Master Song that he would now be afraid of him and did not use any of his techniques anymore. And then Master Song Tian froze in surprise and asked ere this stranger had so much strength and he realized that Yi Tian was a powerful fighter. And at that moment, Yi Tian approached Song Tian and grabbed him tightly by the throat and began to lift him up only with his strong hands. Yi Tian raised Master Song Tian and said that martial cultivators should not mess with and fight with all sorts of scum from the streets. And immediately after these words, Yi Tian threw Master Song Tian with all his might somewhere to the side and said that their fight was already over and he was happy. Master Song Tian fell to the ground with all his might and asked Yi Tian if he understood what mistake he had made and what would happen to him now. Master Song Tian began to crawl on the floor and wanted to quickly escape from there because he realized that his strength was not enough to defeat us with the monster. Yi Tian asked Master Song Tian if he himself understood what he had done and said that even realizing this, he was still trying to escape from them. Master Song Tian wanted to get up, but he failed to do so and he realized that Master Yi Tian had just injured his leg in battle. Yi Tian told Master Song that he noted all his best qualities, but cultivators were not created to help scum. Yi Tian asked Master Song to return back and he asked his friend to take this master with him and return together to Yunzhong. Yi Tian shouted after these masters and ordered them to never appear in Yunzhong again and they were not welcome there and no one respected them. After that, Tian went up to the diplomat and took out ancient ginseng from there and thought that he had long wanted to get such a rarity. Tian took this ginseng with him and told Mr. Dong that he was happy to accept his gift and that he had long wanted to receive just such a prize. After that, Tian returned home and thought that all these masters always underestimated him and suddenly someone started knocking on the door. Tian was surprised who it could be and outside the door they said that they came to Master Tian from Mr. Li Dong and he had a message. The man brought Tian a diplomat with money and said that it was a gift from Mr. Don for his help and objections would not be accepted. Tian agreed with this man and said that it would not be very nice for him to resist the generosity of the boss, Mr. Dong himself. Tian said thank you to Mr. Dong's man and said that now he could leave quietly and he would contact Mr. Dong and thank him. Tian closed the front door and turned around and realized that he still had a lot of things to do that he had to do as quickly as possible. Tian looked at the pill furnace and thought that he should quickly help Hu Liner because she still hopes for Yi Tian's help. And at that very second the oven opened and a very beautiful pill appeared in front of Tian and he realized that the medicine was now definitely ready. Tian realized that the bright color of the pill and powerful waves of energy indicate its worthy quality, which means that all is not lost. Tian realized that the ginseng energy would not be enough for a breakthrough and he should build a qi formation to attack people as soon as possible. Tian realized that making pills is a very expensive business, and therefore Mr. Don's suitcase was useful now, and it's true. After that, Tian came to the antique street of China and just wanted to take a walk there and see all sorts of rare and old treasures. Tian quickly realized that it was very hot on this antique street and he wondered if there was something interesting there and if he would find something there. And at that moment, a man passed next to Tian and he was carrying some goods with him, and for some reason this man alerted Tian. Master Tian thought that he really felt the qi energy and it was so close that it was very strange but curious for him. And then Tian saw that it was a cellar and he was laying out all his goods there and he could find something very interesting. Tian looked at these things and thought that the quality of the jade simply leaves much to be desired, but inside it looks very unusual. 
Tian spent a lot of time looking at a beautiful stone and thought that it looked very beautiful and he could buy one of these stones. Master Tian thought that only an experienced cultivator knew that it was based on the formation method and only the masters knew this. The seller told Tian that he sees that he understands such precious stones and he will sell him this stone for only 100,000. Tian looked at the seller and thought that it was just a robbery and such jade could not possibly cost as much money as it does now. Tian put the jade in its place and said that it is not the age of the jade that plays a decisive role, but its natural properties and the price are absurd. Tian told the seller that the maximum he could offer him for this jade was 10,000 and for that price he would buy the jade from him. Master Tian told the seller that either he would sell him the jade for that price or they could say goodbye and he would go about his business. But suddenly the seller grabbed Master Tian by the hand and asked his brother not to leave and said that people could always agree everywhere. The seller told Tian that this was Lingshan Jade and he bought it in Yunzhong and said that he agreed to sell it to him for 10,000. Tian thought that there was nothing surprising in this and over all these 600 years he learned to bargain and he's good at it. After this purchase, Tian wandered along this street for some time and saw that many people were interested in antiques. Master Tian found a quiet place where there were no people at all and realized that this was what he had been looking for all this time and no one would bother him there. Master Tian once again made sure that there was no one there and realized that the time had come to determine the level of qi of this jade for 10,000. Master Tian took out his new purchase of jade from his pocket and he began to think and thought that this jade looked very good. Master Tian squeezed this jade in his hand and thought that now he would find out the truth about this jade and how much pure qi energy it contains. Tian thought that this formation method was far from ideal and the defects could only be corrected by processing this old jade. Master Tian closed his eyes and thought that jade could contain enormous power and he began to use the technique for this. And then Master Tian opened his eyes and realized that it was wonderful and this result even exceeded his expectations and he was happy about it. Master Tian noticed that in front of him stood a golden jade in which qi energy was collected and the master realized that this was just perfect. Master Tian realized that from now on collecting aura would not be a problem and it had always been difficult for him to collect energy and find a suitable place. And then Master Tian's phone rang and he thought that even now he didn't expect a call from anyone and what these people always needed. Tian took out his phone and saw that Li Xiao was calling him and the master was surprised and thought that she needed it because she never calls him. Li Zhu greeted Yi Tian and asked him to come to one place quickly and said that they were now in big trouble. And after a couple of minutes, Tian quickly arrived at this cafe and he thought why Li Xiao called him there and she was scared during the call. Yi Tian noticed that the bar was closed and thought that the problem seemed to be much more serious and at first he thought that she just needed something. Master Tian thought that he needed to go to the bar and find out for Li Xiao what was really going on there and help her solve this problem. Tian opened the front door of the bar and noticed that Li Xiao was sitting in the bar all alone and thought that she was clearly upset. Li Xiao saw Tian and said that he had come and she was glad to see her good friend again who would never let her down. Master Tian began to approach Li Xiao and asked her what really happened there and why she called him and was in shock. Li Xiao asked Tian if he remembered those runts who attacked her then and the whole matter and problems were because of these scoundrels. Li Zhu told Tian that she sent her people to these scoundrels and he should come soon and tell her all the information. And after a couple of seconds, the man asked Li Zhu who she was standing and talking to in the bar and whether she could trust this person next to her. The man greeted Li Xiao and Yi Tian and he said that he and his friends would punish those who offended Li Xiao and they would cry. The man said that he Mo Sha Tian promises that they will never dare to harm anyone again and this will be a good lesson for them. Mo Sha Shen's friend asked his brother if he really hoped to capture Li Zhu's heart in this way and this was an atypical approach. Mo Sha Tian asked his friend not to talk nonsense to him and said that he just wanted to help his good friend cope with trouble. And at that moment many guys came into the room and said that there were so many of them there and what they were discussing when they all gathered there together. The guys said that they were all idiots and they were lucky that they all gathered in one place today and it was some kind of jackpot. Mo Shatian asked the guy who he was and told him to bite his tongue, otherwise Mo Shatian said that the guy risks being left without a tongue. But the guy called Mo Shatian an idiot and asked if he knew who he was and his name was Zhang Liang and he was an authority among all people. 
Mo Shatian told Zhang that he seemed to be from the Hong family and Li Dong was his wife's brother and he insulted Zhu and now he came to them. Zhang Liang said that their families agreed not to interfere in these conflicts and in this case, the law was who was stronger and was right. Zhang Liang asked Mo Shatian if he was going to blatantly violate this agreement today by interfering in their conflict with Li Zhu. People looked at the guy and wondered if it was Fan Jiangming himself and said that they did not expect him to be in this place. People said that there were all sorts of rumors about him and they were very interested in what he was doing there and what he needed from them today. Zhang Liang at this time pushed Mo Shatian away and ordered him to move out of his way and never stand in his way anywhere again. Zhang Liang told Li Xiu that he would not harm them, but if her bar did not quickly pay him for moral damages, he would beat up all her friends together. Zhang Liang said that he will never calm down and will wait until the last minute for her to pay him for this moral damage. Li Xiu asked Zhang Liang to just talk and said that the bar is all hers and she will not just give this bar to just anyone on the street. Zhang Liang came closer to her and asked Li Xiuwu if she really wanted to talk to him and said that he agreed to talk to her. Zhang Liang said that if she does everything he says, he will pretend that nothing happened and just leave this bar forever. Li Xiu told Zhang Liang that she would never do this and he would still someday answer for all his deeds and be punished. Li Zhu looked at her friends and asked if any of them could help her because she was there alone talking to this Zhang Liang. Mo Shatian asked Li Zhu better not to contact them and said maybe she should accept his offer and then he will leave from there. Zhang Liang was shocked by Mo Shatian's question and he saw that among Li Zhu's people there was one very familiar guy in the crowd. Zhang Liang approached Yi Tian and asked him what he was doing there and how he knew all these people and Li Zhu herself in particular. Zhang Liang told Li Xue that she could give him this guy if she did not want to fulfill all his wishes and he would kill Yi Tian. Mo Shatian told Li Xiu that they didn't care what happened to this Yi Tian and said that he should die and go to heaven. Tian thought that that bastard Mo Shatian just gave it to this guy to save himself and realized that he was a pathetic coward. Tian wanted to approach Zhang Liang, but Li Xiu put her hand in front of him and said that she would not let her best friend go anywhere. Li Xiu asked Zhang Liang if he didn't want to get to know her better and said that she was ready to dance in front of him now. Li Xiu's mood immediately fell and she did not want to go with the bastard Zhang Liang, but she no longer wanted Tian to get hurt now. Zhang Liang began to pull Li Zhu's hand and told her to walk with him, but suddenly Tian told Zhang to wait a couple of minutes and not leave. Yi Tian asked Li Zhu to step aside from there and said that she would not go anywhere today and would stay in her bar for life. Tian looked at the bastard Zhang Liang and said that it was time to deal with these guys who were already very tired of him and infuriated him. Tian asked these people if they were ashamed to mock a simple and defenseless girl and said that it was a vile act. Li Xiu looked at how Yi Tian defended her with all his might and she realized that he was a true friend to her, unlike the others. Zhang Liang asked Tian if he was playing the hero again and said that this time he would not be able to defeat them and would definitely lose in the bar. Zhang Liang approached his friend and asked brother Jiang Ming that he would cover him while he fought with this scoundrel Tian. Zhang Liang said that the third master of their family taught Jiang Ming and now he has reached such heights that no one there could imagine it. Tian was not at all interested in how strong this Jiang Ming was because all his rivals would have the same tragic ending. Tian listened to Zhang Liang's story and thought that isn't this third master the same San Zi that they met earlier? Tian told Jiang Ming that he knew their third master, but then he noticed that this fighter had already rushed towards him to hit him. Jiang Ming asked Tian if he really thinks that he has the right to call his master by name and he is simply not worthy of this honor. Tian smiled and thought that this Jiang Ming didn't even realize that he had already fought with his master and the fight passed without any intrigue. And at that moment, Tian stopped Jiang Ming's blow and said that this is not bad and he must admit that he is not much stronger than the teacher. Ling Zhu froze in surprise and could not believe that Tian was such a strong fighter and was able to stop the blow of an experienced fighter. Mo Sha Tian was also shocked, because he also did not expect that this Tian, without any special features, would turn out to be such a great master. Tian looked at Jiang Ming and thought that this fighter also did not expect that his opponent was strong and he took him by surprise and surprised him. Jiang Ming couldn't understand how this guy was able to block his blow and he had already trained with Master Sun for so many years. And at that moment, all of Zhang Liang's people said that their master was there and they did not expect to see the master in this bar and why did he come. 
the students noticed that their master was slowly walking towards them and they were glad to see their teacher in life and just a good-natured person again. Jiang Ming greeted his teacher and said that he expected to see him anywhere but here and why did he take the time to come. Tian looked at their master and thought that he recognized this man and he should remember their recent meeting in the restaurant in the villa. All the people said that their master was the best and strongest fighter in the whole world and no one could compare with the master of their clan. Jiang Ming thought that his teacher personally came there and he wondered how much longer Tian would resist their master. The student approached the master and said that this guy had now humiliated all of them and said that now it was time to teach him good manners. Master San Zi was surprised and asked his students who this impudent man was who dared to attack his guys and beat them. And at that very second Tian said hello to Master San Zi and the master simply froze in surprise and could not believe his eyes that it was him. Master San Zi asked Tian what he was doing there because he could not expect to see him in this bar and what he needed in the establishment. Master San Zi asked Master Tian if this wonderful bar really belonged to his friend and he wanted to get more information. Jiang Ming did not understand what was happening there and asked his master why he was so polite to this arrogant guy who beat them all. Master San Zi asked how many times did he tell his students that before flying his name, first figure out who they were dealing with. Jiang Ming said that he didn't understand because Tian was an ordinary hard worker like all people and why the master treated him with such kindness. And then Tian turned to Master San Zi and said that he had a few words for him about his students that they should discuss now. Tian told Master San Zi that his student is not bad, but there is still work to be done and he knows what skills they need to quickly improve. Master San Zi asked Jiang Ming how dare he say such things about Master Tian and told him to quickly apologize to him for his actions. Jiang Ming told Master San Zi that why should he apologize to this guy and he can finish off this weakling with one hand. Master Tian thought and it became clear to him that the young master's pride knew no bounds and he imagined himself to be a very great fighter. But Tian told all these people that he wanted to give them the last word and he would not change his mind again because he had finally decided about him. Tian told the students that he was afraid that it was time for them to put an end to their issue and forever reveal the winner of this conflict and dispute. And immediately after these words, Tian began to use his technique and sent many of his blue and bright rays towards Jiang Ming. Zhang Liang stood and did not move and he asked his master to help him get out of there safe and sound and not let him die in the bar. Zhang Liang lay on the floor after the attack and said that he didn't want anything else and they could keep this damn bar and they would leave. Jiang Ming looked at Master Tian's attacks and realized that he still has room to grow and must train a lot and learn from mistakes. And at that moment, a man came up behind Jiang Ming and told him that he wanted to talk to him and give him some useful advice. The man said that the air sword technique is only available to experienced masters who have reached heights, and he was too young. Tian thought that one glance was enough for him to recognize his technique and he realized that this old man is not as simple as everyone seems. And after that, the old man approached Tian and asked for forgiveness for disturbing him and said that he also wanted to say a few words to him. The old man said that his name was Bai Ying and asked Tian to accept a ticket to a private auction that would soon be held on the antique street. And then Bai Ying asked all the people there if the conflict they had with Master Tian had been resolved and if everything was okay. Tian thought that this old man Bai Ying was dressed like a simple person and it seemed like he didn't like to stand out from the crowd of all people. Tian told Bai Ying that he just needed some very rare things and therefore he accepted the ticket and will come to this auction. Master San Zi was sipping drinks at the bar at that time and he said that Master Tian was generous as always and it was wonderful. Master San Zi asked disciple Jiang Ming to drink with him to Master Tian because he respected this man very much and was proud of him. And then all the other people approached Master San Zi and they all also took one glass and said that they would drink to this Master Tian. Jiang Ming drank drinks with everyone and wondered if Master Tian was so much better than him and he would never be able to get closer to him. Mo Sha Tian at this time was thinking how he could now look Li Xiu in the eyes when her honor was defended not by him but by some unknown guy. Li Xiu told Tian that she was immensely grateful to him and she could not figure out how to thank her savior in her entire life. Tian told Li Xiu that she hired him herself and he did what he should have done anyway and there was no need to thank him so much all the time. Li Xiu told Tian that she was already uncomfortable and he had helped her once again, but she didn't have that much money to give money. 
and so Li Zhu told Tian that as of today he owns half the shares of their bar and will run the business of the bar with her as director. The waiters said that it seemed like their new boss had fallen in love with their boss Li Zhu and how sweet it was and they wished them happiness and harmony. Li Zhu told the slackers to stop talking nonsense and said that she would have to deduct it from their salaries if they did not get busy. Tian looked at the waiters and thought that only a couple of days had passed and they already considered him their person and it was very nice. But Tian told Li Xiu that he did not need any shares and did not need anything, but if she needed help, she could call him. Tian asked Li Zhu to see what kind of mess it was and said that he better go and clean it up, otherwise they will scare away all the customers. Master San Zi asked Jiang Ming why he stood up and asked that Master Tian really had to clean up all this mess alone. Tian asked Master San Zi to be more vigilant in the future and not allow his name to be scattered left and right everywhere. Master San Zi thanked Master Tian for the advice and said that he understood everything and would now take the necessary measures for his students. Tian agreed with Master San Zi and said that then see you again and will wait for their meeting to sit together as friends. Li Xiu looked at how Tian was putting things in order and realized that she was not at all mistaken in hiring him for the job and he really helped them all. And at that moment two girls came into the bar and they were singing songs and they were in a great mood and they wanted to have fun all day. It was Wang Zihan with her friend and they came to the bar and wanted to relax after a hard day of work and just sit. Zihan told Li Hui that she completely disagreed with her and there was good music and a very pleasant atmosphere of a good place. Yi Tian heard a familiar voice and thought if it were the ones he was thinking about and turned around and realized that he was completely right. Tian asked Zihan if it was really her and he could not believe that they had met again after a recent complete breakup. Li Hui asked him if his name was Yi Tian and said that she was Zihan's friend and wanted to say thank you for saving them back in the villa. Tian told Li Hui that she didn't have to say thank you to him and that these were just little things for him and he was glad that everything worked out then. Wang Zihan looked at her ex-boyfriend and thought what kind of arrogance was this and Yi Tian did not want to change with time. Li Hui asked Tian not to pay attention to Zihan and said that she was joking and she wanted to thank him earlier in school. Li Hui said that somehow they didn't cross paths and tomorrow she will perform at the school festival and they hoped that he will come there. Zihan was offended and asked her friend Li Hui why she invited Tian to the festival and said that he was not worthy of it. Li Hui asked Zihan to stop talking like that, and yet he was their savior and she should never forget about this evening. Zihan told Li Hui that she had known Tian for years and she was sure that he was good for nothing and asked her to come to her senses. Zihan told Li Hui that now she is in no mood to sit in this bar and asked her to quickly leave this place. Tian said that he didn't need a stupid and picky girl and it would be better if they didn't know each other with Wang Zihan and were strangers. Li Hui asked Yi Tian not to forget about the festival and said that she would wait for him there and she was glad to see her friend again. Tian told Li Hui that she need not worry about this and he would definitely come to the school festival on this important day. Li Xiu looked at this and thought that this girl arranged everything herself and maybe she should also try to do the same as them. And after a while, Tian came to the 80th anniversary festival of the Rangan school and realized that this school lived up to its status. After this, the concert began and all the people gathered at the Rangan school and began to wait for the appearance of all the stars and their familiar schoolchildren. Tian was sitting there and for some reason it seemed to him that he had come to a concert and not to a school festival and it was very strange and unusual. All the girls were screaming that they saw Yushan on stage and they all thought that he was such a cool guy and they were in love with him. Tian was angry and thought that he could not get away from the noise and his ears hurt and even the qi energy did not save him from the screeching of this aura and noise. The girl said that stop dreaming and doesn't she see that Shang Rong and Emo Sha Tian are also coming for Yushan and they were all cool. Tian didn't even think that Yushan had such a high status and now even after curing Hu Liner he wouldn't be able to bypass him and it was sad. And then suddenly Li Zhu came on stage and said hello to all the teachers and students in this school and she was the host of this best show. Tian was surprised if Li Zhu was the host of this festival and why he was learning about it only now and why she was silent about this news. And the disciple next to Tian shouted with all his might that Li Zhu was his most beloved goddess from his dreams and he was in love with her eyes and body. Tian realized that he was mistaken and he would not leave there alive and it was too noisy there and all the people liked this chaos and loud sounds. Tian thought that if he had known about this, 
he would never have come there, but since he was already there, he would have to put earplugs on his ears. Presenter Li Xiao asked people to meet schoolgirl Li Hui on stage with the song I Love You and support her with loud applause. And a second later Li Hui came onto the stage and all the teachers and students of the Rangan school were very happy that she came out on stage so cute. Li Hui was singing her song and at that time Mo Shantian approached Li Xiao and gave her a drink of water to gain strength before she left. Li Zhu said thank you to Mo Shantian, but she didn't want to drink the water now and refused the water he offered and returned it back. Mo Shantian's mood immediately dropped and he realized that Li Xiao had never forgiven him after that incident and still did not want to communicate. Li Hui said that she dedicates this song to the hero of her heart and she would like to believe that their feelings will eventually be mutual. Li Zhu thought what the hell was going on there and did Li Hui really want to confess his love right on stage and she really didn't like it. And then suddenly Li Hui started singing her song and said on stage directly into the microphone that she loves Yi Tian and is just crazy about him. All the students wondered if the third beauty of the school was not at all embarrassed to admit her feelings and who Yi Tian was. At this time, Yi Tian still had earplugs in his ears, so he couldn't hear anything and thought that the songs had ended and he was leaving. After that, Yi Tian began to leave from there and Li Hui saw him leaving this place and realized that it was Yi Tian and why he went somewhere. Tian at this time thought what was special about these festivals and there was only a crowd of cheerful teenagers and this waste of people's time. Li Hui said that Tian had promised her to come and why did he leave this festival at the very moment when she was singing her song. MC Li Xiaowu came on stage and said thank you to Li Hui for such a wonderful performance and may they give her some rest. Li Zhu began to announce the next participant and thought that she already knew that Li Hui would not melt Yi Tian's heart and she had a chance. After this festival, Tian returned home and went to bed because he had a hard day yesterday and he rested after such a bustle of the city. The next morning, Tian sat on the floor at home and worked on developing his energy and he felt a surge of strength every day. Li Zhu texted Tian yesterday and said that they were all going to the bar and it was boring without him and she wanted to call him. Tian was now sitting and thought that he had almost processed the aura into his qi energy and all he had to do was absorb it to become stronger. Tian realized that with mineral cultivation of ginseng and a miraculous pill, he could cultivate even more effectively and that's cool. Mineral cultivation was a technique based on the previously mentioned ten-sided aura purification and it helped the master. Tian thought that for this technique to work, he must forget about skin and bones and just allow his body to transform now. Tian began to sweat and he knew that this cultivation worked and it was very effective for such an experienced master as himself. Tian hit with his fists and realized that this technique was working and he now felt that his fists had become very strong, like real stone. Tian realized that he felt strong and his body was becoming as strong as before and he was improving every day and this made him happy. Tian remembered and realized that Hu Liner's treatment should not be delayed and he decided that tomorrow he would go to her and help with her illness. And immediately after her development, Tian went to Hu Liner and realized that her treatment had already been delayed due to the fact that there were no medicines. Tian was met at the entrance by a man and told Master Yi that Hu Liner had given him an order to personally meet him at the entrance and invite him into the house. They entered Hu Liner's house and Tian very clearly looked at her huge house and it seemed to him that it was a very expensive mansion. Tian thought that the Hu family mansion is so unusual and it is rare to find so much aura and the carrier of this poison suffers from this. And then a man came out to Tian and asked the master if it was he whom Hu Liner told him about and he wanted to see him. Tian agreed with the man and said that his name was Yi Tian and he was there to cure Hu Liner and try to help her. The man asked the master to follow him and thought that he had recently graduated from kindergarten and had already come to them to treat Hu Liner's disease. They began to climb the stairs and someone asked old man Li who he brought home and how he knew they weren't expecting a guest at home today. This question was asked by the head of the Hu Hu family Wen Chan and he began to go down to this guest with whom he wanted to personally talk and understand who it was. The man told the head of Hu Wen Chang that this master was invited by his daughter Mrs. Hu Liner and the guy happily came to their aid. Hu Wen Chang said that he told his daughter not to trust every person on the street and how can a master be such a young guy. The head of Hu Wen Chang told Tian that they were not interested in him and he could walk away from there and never disturb their rich family again. And at that very second, 
Hu Liner appeared in front of the head of Hu Wen Chong and asked Uncle Li what he was doing and asked Tian not to go anywhere. Hu Liner approached Tian and said that she was very glad to see him there and she did not believe that he would come, but he still came to visit. Hu Wen Chong asked Hu Liner what she was doing and said that she was a girl and asked Old Man Li to stop his daughter immediately. Hu Liner was glad to see Tian and told the master that she was already going to look for him, but fortunately he himself came as he promised her. Master Tian told Hu Liner that the cold poison had worsened her condition, but asked her not to worry and said that he had brought her medicine. But then some man told Master Tian that he would not do this under any circumstances and he would not allow him to give this stupid medicine. And then a man appeared in front of Tian and said that if he was deaf, then he repeated that he would not allow him to give this medicine. Tian got angry and asked the man why he wouldn't allow him to give her medicine because it could help Miss Hu Liner a lot. But the man told Tian that he had no right to ask him any question and he still wouldn't answer the stranger's question. Yi Tian looked at this man closer and wondered if this guy was also a cultivator but he could be wrong in his guesses. Head Hu Wen Chang told Liner that that's why he invited Master Feng Xian to them and he was a real cultivator than others. Master Tian thought that he felt weak energy waves, but they were dark and he went down the wrong, very evil path. Feng Xiang told everyone that Hu Liner was seriously ill, but he was able to cure her of this disease and now he will show everyone his skills. The head of the Hu family, Wen Chang, said thank you to Master Feng Xiang and took him to the living room and said that he could feel at home. Hu Wen Chang gave Master Feng Xiang tea and asked him to try this tea and said that Da Hong tea was very difficult to obtain. Feng Xiang tried this Da Hong tea and immediately spat out all the tea and said that it was some kind of abomination that he gave him now. Hu Wen Chang smiled and told Feng Xiang that it was a matter of taste, but now asked him to return to Hu Liner's illness and the treatment of the disease. Feng Xiang said that everything was fine and if the reason lies only in the cold poison, he will simply free her body from this cold poison. Head Hong said thank you to the master, and Hu Liner thought that this lustful look from the master made him want to fall into the ground. Tian was interested because even he is not able to simply extract cold poison from Hu Liner's body and what is this cunning Feng Xiang up to. Feng Xiang told Mr. Hu that what kind of rudeness is this and Tian only interfered with him and doesn't he himself understand what he needs to do with him. Hu Liner said that he was her friend and since he was his guest, Feng Xiang should be very respectful of her best friends. Feng Xiang told Hu Liner that they would turn a blind eye to this and said that his time was too precious and asked Miss Hu if she was ready. Hu Wen Chang asked Master Feng Xian if he really wanted to start so quickly and if he needed to prepare for such a complex operation. Feng Xiang told Mr. Hu that he knew what he was doing and asked Hu Liner to close his eyes and not open them until he said so. Hu Liner closed her eyes and Feng Xiang began to treat Miss for her illness and she thought that this person could do little to help her with her illness. Feng Xiang closed his eyes and began to use his technique to supposedly cure Miss Hu Liner of her illness and make her happy. And at that moment, Hu Liner sharply opened her eyes and now she no longer moved and did not understand what was happening there and was like a statue. Master Tian looked at all this and thought that this deceiver was not even trying to save Hu Liner and what did he do to her instead of treating her. Head Hu Wen Chang saw that his daughter Hu Liner was not moving and he began to worry and asked Master Fen Xiang what was happening to her. But Feng Xiang did not listen to the head of Hu Wen Chang and continued to cast a spell on his daughter Hu Liner and told her to ascend and it worked. Hu Liner seemed to be under hypnosis and she did not pay attention to the words and actions of other people and it seemed that she fell asleep while standing. Master Tian realized that this was a mark that sealed souls and only all the villains used this technique and it was very bad for her. The head of Hu Wen Chang began to get very angry and asked Feng Xian what he had done to his daughter and ordered his men to take this deceiver. But Feng Xiang asked these stupid people if they really thought they could stop him and it was no longer possible. But Hu Wen Chang and his people also could not budge and the leader told Feng Xian that he was a monster and would soon finish him off. But suddenly Master Tian began to approach behind Hu Wen Chang and told Feng Xian that there is an interesting saying about guests. Tian asked Master Feng Xiang if he was already leaving and how could a guest leave without having dinner with them and he must do this at home. Feng Xiang asked Tian if he really thought that he would have dinner with some dirty runt cultivator with no fighting skills. Tian told Feng Xian that he treated Miss Hu Liner very vilely and for this he would have to answer for these vile and evil actions of his. 
But at that moment, Grandfather Hu Liner came out to them and asked Yi Tian to stop and the Hu family was able to deal with the problem themselves. Hu Wen Chan was surprised and asked his father what he was doing there because it was very dangerous there and he had better go home and rest there. Grandfather told Tian that he was grateful that he decided to stand up for them but other families would laugh at them if they found out that he helped. Master Tian looked at this grandfather and thought that he was only an old man and how could he fight with a young cultivator. The old man asked Feng Xian how dare he threaten their reputation and he will be punished for such actions and soon he will regret it. The old man said that the Hu family treated him with respect and many gifts were laid at his feet, but he brazenly kidnapped his granddaughter. Feng Xiang was surprised and asked where so much insolence came from in the dry old man and why he should answer him for his arrogant actions. Master Tian saw that Feng Xiang was quietly preparing his attack and asked Grandpa Hu to be careful and not fall into the trap of this scoundrel. And at that moment, Feng Xiang began to quickly deal with Hu Wen Chang's people and they could not respond to his evil and powerful attack. Feng Xiang smiled and asked the old man how he liked his soul claw and this was the best technique he used and he liked it. And immediately after these words, Feng Xiang grabbed old man who with his technique and began to hurt him and the grandfather screamed but did not want to give in to him. Hu Wen Chang watched all this and asked Feng Xian how he dares to do this to his family and this is payment for all the kindness of the family. Feng Xiang asked the head of Hu Wen Chang who he was to address him so brazenly and why he was such an impudent person. Feng Xiang told the Hu family that he had had enough and he had no time for games and it was time to end this performance and he was tired of playing with them. Feng Xiang dealt a powerful blow to old man Hu and he fell to the floor without strength and it was all over with him and Hu Wen Chang asked his father not to lose consciousness. Feng Xiang began to run towards the head and said that now he and his whole family will go to the underworld and nothing will save them now. Hu Wen Chang stood next to his father and wondered if today the ancient Hu clan would cease to exist because of his mistake. And at that second there was a huge explosion and Feng Xiang used all his techniques to finish off the entire Hu family together forever. But Master Tian quickly ran to the head of Hu Wen Chang and asked them to stay behind him and Mr. Hu thought what Master Tian was doing now. Feng Xiang told Master Tian that he was so self-confident and said that then he too would face the same end as this whole family. Feng Xiang directed his dangerous attacks towards Yi Tian, but Tian immediately put up a shield in front of him and his attacks did not reach these people. Feng Xiang continued to attack Master Tian and said that he would not be able to defend himself for long and soon his attack would reach him and his family. Tian thought that the art of deliverance and the claw of souls were pure techniques of the devil, but this did not stop him and he thirsts for even more. Master Tian told Feng Xian that evil can never be defeated and a true cultivator should not follow in the footsteps of the devil and this is evil. Hu Wen Chang told his father that it was his mistake and he did not listen to Hu Linner and trusted Feng Xiang and his choice led to the fall of the Hu family. Head Hu Wen Chang thought and told Hu Linner that his father was wrong and now the fate of the Hong family lies in the hands of cultivator Yi Tian. At this time, Feng Xiang and Yi Tian continued to fight with each other and both of them had very strong techniques that were difficult to penetrate. Tian tried his best and he remembered that he promised Hu Linner that he would protect her from any danger and he wants to keep his promise. Feng Xiang looked at Tian with a grin and thought that he had already begun to feel how his enemy's defense was becoming weaker and this was his chance. And at that very second there was a huge explosion and the head of Hu Wen Chang was very frightened by such an explosion and thought that Master Tian had suffered. Hu Wen Chang started screaming and asked Master Tian if he was okay, because not every person could survive such an explosion. But to his surprise, Yi Tian stood without a single scratch and told Mr. Hu that everything was fine with him, but the enemy had problems. Feng Xiang was shocked and asked Tian what he had done to him and why he now doesn't feel his fierce power and where could it have disappeared to. Feng Xiang ordered Tian to answer immediately and asked why he was so calm and because of him his meridians were upset and he could not fight. But at this time, Yi Tian walked up to Mr. Hu's man and asked him to lend him his shirt, and he said that he would take it off right away. Feng Xiang could not get up and continue the fight and asked Tian what happened to him and he could not get up and what else the fighter Tian was capable of. But Tian threw this shirt on Feng Xiang and said that he had no doubt that this shirt suited him and in the end he was right. 
Feng Xiang was surprised and asked Tian why it fit him exactly in size because he had never worn this shirt and saw it for the first time. Tian said that he was named Feng Xiang with the hope that he would follow the true path and how his family was mistaken. Tian told Feng Xiang that he didn't even know the meaning of his name and it was some kind of shame and why he looked like a small boy. Tian ordered Feng Xian to return to his master and tell him that he would finish off all degenerates like him and would not spare anyone. Hu Wen Chang was pleased with Tian and said that he was a true and sincere cultivator and he was convinced of this with his own eyes. Then Yi Tian walked up to Grandfather Hu and brought his finger to the old man's head and began to use the technique and his pure qi energy. Hu Wen Chang asked Master Tian if his father would live because he didn't want him to die at all because they all loved Grandpa Hu. Tian said that Feng Xian's strength was not enough to kill Grandfather Hu and now he needs rest and complete peace without any stress. And at that moment, Grandpa Hu began to slowly come to his senses and he opened his eyes and began to utter the first words after that. Hu Wen Chang asked his father if he had come to his senses and grandfather who asked if Master Tian really saved him and he did not expect this at all at the beginning. Grandfather told Tian that the Hu family will forever remember what he did, but he has one more request and that is to save his granddaughter Hu Liner. Tian asked Grandpa Hu to be quiet and said that he shouldn't get up now and he originally came there to cure Liner. Tian approached Hu Liner and said that the qi and cold poison in her body were mixed together and therefore it would not be easy to rid her of the poison. Hu Wen Chang asked Master Tian if he needed something and now he would give instructions to his people and they would quickly do everything right there. Tian said thank you to Mr. Hu and asked him to prepare four burning bowls and four water jugs and place them around Hu Liner. A few minutes later, Hu Wen Chang did everything that Master Tian asked of him and told him that everything was ready for his daughter's treatment. Tian said that only Hu Liner's relatives can stay, and those who are interested in watching should move 10 meters away and watch. Tian opened Hu Liner's mouth and put his rare ginseng pill there and thought that this should definitely help the poor girl. And then Hu Liner began to sweat and she was in great pain because the bad energy that the scoundrel Fen Xiang had started coming out of her. Tian saw that Hu Liner was already much better and he said that now they can start treating her for the disease and she will become healthy. Tian relaxed and he began to cast a spell and Hu Liner immediately rose into the air and the master said that everything was going according to his plan and that was good. Master Tian said that fire, water, earth, wind, mountains and thunder from the heavens would help him and they would help Hu Liner get rid of the disease. And at that very second, bad qi and unnecessary energy began to come out of Hu Liner, and Tian was glad that he was doing everything correctly so far. Master Tian saw that Hu Liner's energy appeared above the jug and it was already clean and during this time she managed to cleanse herself of dirt. Master Tian smiled and realized that everything was working out for him and his family did not need to worry about anything and their daughter would be a healthy lady. And at that moment, Hu Liner opened her eyes and all her relatives were very surprised and thought that Tian was a real hero. Hu Liner asked what was wrong with her and the assistant asked Miss if the cold poison was tormenting her anymore and how she was feeling. The man told Master Tian that it was incredible and he was able to cure Miss Liner's incurable disease and she is now happy. Hu Wen Chang said a huge thank you to Master Tian for saving their entire family and in particular his beloved daughter from her bad illness. Grandfather said that cold poison had been torturing Liner since her birth, and not only did it cure her, but it also saved them all from the scoundrel Feng Xiang. Grandfather Hu told Master Tian that if he needed anything, he could call him and the Hu family would help in any matter. Yi Tian thanked Grandpa Hu for his kindness and said that they shouldn't worry about it so much because he himself wanted to help them all. Grandfather Hu asked his man to bring him documents for the Flame Maple Villa and the man said that he would do everything now. Grandfather Hu told Master Tian that the Hu family always thanked their friends very generously and asked him to accept this modest villa as a gift. Hu Liner said that what Master Tian did is not worth some villa and said that she thinks that she should be the reward. Hu Liner smiled at Tian, but Grandfather Hu asked what she was carrying and she just couldn't become his reward and he needed something bigger. Grandfather Hu said that Yi Tian was a dragon and Hu Liner was not worthy of such a man and they could not be together and be a couple. Yi Tian told Grandpa Hu that he agreed to accept his gift and as he thought, Grandpa Hu would not allow Hu Liner's feelings to come out. Hu Liner asked her grandfather why he didn't let her make her own decisions and then she would at least take Master Tian to his villa. 
Hu Lin er told Master Tian that she must take him to the villa since the guards only allow members of the Hu family into the villa. The Flame Maple Villa was an ideal place for his development, and in those places there is a high concentration of aura and the Lin er family is so generous. Hu Lin er told all her people that from now on this villa belongs to Yi Tian and asked everyone to obey him in all matters. Yi Tian wanted to get to know the people who work in this villa better and approached them and asked them to listen to his new instructions. Tian said that they only need to come for cleaning a couple of times a week and whoever wants can go to the old owners even now. Hu Lin er approached Master Tian and said that this is not the best solution and these people are paid well to work in the villa. Yi Tian told Hu Lin er that he just loves silence and being alone and if that's all then she needs to go home and she needs a good rest. Hu Lin er was upset and wondered if he didn't like her because she did everything to make him happy, but he doesn't see it. And at night Tian sat on the floor and thought that the full moon is the time for development and then the concentration of the aura reaches its peak. Tian realized that the battle with Fen Xian had almost destroyed his good mineral cultivation structure and it needed to be restored. Yi Tian remembered that the absorption of qi consists of three stages and these are counteraction, protection and synthesis, and all of them were important to him. Tian thought that counteraction and defense could stop an attacker and was important for protecting the fighter during battle. Tian realized that this was a complete success and he is now moving on to a very important step toward synthesis and he has been waiting for this moment for a long time. Master Tian put his hand in front of the core and began the third stage of synthesis and it should have passed without any problems. But when Master Tian directed all his energy to the core, it immediately burned out and he did not expect such an outcome and it was not at all according to plan. Master Tian completely incinerated this core and he thought that this was really bad and he overdid it too much and everything failed. And at that moment a message came to Tian's phone and someone now asked him if he knew who he could get gems from. The next day, all the people gathered in one place and asked Brother Hua what it was and waited for an explanation from him about the stone. Hua said that it was nothing special and he thought that a bracelet made of precious stones would look good on Li Xiu's wrist. People asked him to wait and said that he was from the Qianlong era and he was worth a lot of money and did he really want to propose to her? Hua said that this is an ordinary gift and some trinket is not enough for a marriage proposal, especially for such a lady as Su. Li Xiu asked Hua how many times should she tell him that she didn't want his gifts and didn't want any gems. Li Xiu thought that she needed to move away from the Li family as soon as possible because she did not want them to decide the fate of her marriage without her. Hua told Li Xiu that they would soon get married and she would have to accept his gifts, but this is not about that now because this auction will start soon. Li Xiu thought that old man Chang gave Yi Tian a pass and she wondered if he would come to this auction of various expensive stones. At this time, Yi Tian and Hu Lin er were driving along the road at high speed and said that they were a little late and the auction was starting. But despite this, they very quickly arrived at the auction house and thought that today there must be a lot of rare stones there. Hu Lin er told Tian that old man Chang said that the auction should not contain the mineral he needed, but she would help with the search. And when they went inside, Hua met them and asked who pleased them so much with his presence and his name is Nahua, he is glad to meet you. Li Zhu told Tian that she knew that he would come there and had no doubt about it, and she and Nahua waited for him and Hu Lin er together. But Tian was thinking about something completely different and it was strange and was the Hu family interested in auctions and then why did Hu Lin er go with him? Tian said that he heard that a very valuable mineral would be put up for auction and he would like to take a closer look at it. Hu Lin er looked at Li Zhu and thought why she was looking at Yi Tian like that and she was very irritated by her and she didn't want to communicate with her. Hu Lin er told Tian that she found out from old man Chang the list of all the items in the auction and let them go and take their places there. Yi Tian agreed with Hu Lin er and said goodbye to Li Zhu and said that he was glad to meet her and they would talk after the auction was over. Li Xiu thought that of course Hu Lin er was her father's spoiled daughter and she is a girl from the Li family and they are like heaven and earth. Nahuo wondered who this young man was and how he suddenly found himself in such company as Hu Lin er and why his departure upset Miss Li Zhu so much. Nahuo called his man to him and ordered him to find out who Hu Lin er came with and who this stranger is by the end of this auction. And at that moment the presenter announced that the auction would begin soon and respectfully asked all people to take their places before that. The presenter asked everyone for forgiveness for the delay and said that they would now bring the first thing onto the stage and immediately begin this auction. 
The presenter said that the first item in the auction will be a bronze sculpture of a Ming Dynasty horse and the starting price is 10 million. People immediately began to bargain among themselves and raise the stakes and they started at 11 and ended at 18 million. Tian was sure that what he came there for was more expensive than a bronze trinket, and he still hoped to save his money at the auction. And after some time the presenter hit the table with a hammer and said that the bronze horses were sold for 18 million. Tian realized that cultivation items were too expensive and he needed to figure out a way to earn more money for these items. After that, the next item was brought onto the stage and it was a family of minerals and they had an interesting history of their long-standing mining. The presenter said these minerals were mined together and since then they have been inseparable and the starting price for the minerals is 50 million. Tian immediately stood up and said that he was offering 55 million for the minerals and only with them would he complete the structure of his qi. And then Hu Liner heard the people behind her saying that it looked like he was from the Hu family and it was better not to get involved in bidding with this guy. A friend of this man said that he agreed with him and he also did not want to offend a representative of such an elite and wealthy family. The presenter said that the last price was 55 million and asked who would offer more and wanted to sell the minerals to Tian. But suddenly at the last moment someone asked the presenter to wait for him a little and Nahua said that he would give 80 million. The presenter said that this round pleased them with a high bid and she congratulated Nahua on her victory and said that the second lot was also sold. People thought how Nahua dared to outbid a man from the Hu family and realized that it seemed that this man was tired of living in the world. People wondered why they were so afraid of this young man and maybe he had nothing to do with the Hu family and the Hua family was also strong. Hu Liner told Tian that 80 million was pennies and why didn't he ask her for it and then they would have won the minerals. Tian told Liner that not everything was lost, but it was difficult to find such minerals, but his pride would not allow him to take money from Liner. Nahua asked Li Xiao why she was looking at this loser and said that this guy lost and he Nahua won as always. Li Xiao asked Nahua for forgiveness and said that she was not feeling well and asked to be allowed to leave him there alone. But Nahua told Li Xiao that he had spent a lot of money on her gifts and asked what else she needed for them to get married. But Li Xiao told Nahua that she did not want to marry him and no gifts would change her mind and he tried in vain with these. Nahua thought how dare Li Zhu talk to him like that, and if it weren't for her last name, he wouldn't even pay attention to such a girl. The man told Mr. Hua that he received information about Yi Tian and he does not have high status and rich parents like other children. The assistant told Nahua that, after learning this information, he did not understand how Tian managed to get into this auction and where he got the money from. Nahua asked his man to quickly bring Yi Tian to his VIP room and said that he wanted to talk to him there alone. And then the man Nahua approached Yi Tian and said that the mister who won the minerals wants to see him now and talk. Yi Tian agreed with him and told him to take him to him and thought that the new owner of the minerals really wants to sell them to him now. The man brought Tian into the room and said that he could go inside without any problems and his boss had been waiting for him there for a long time and wanted to see him. Yi Tian entered the room and asked Nahua why this meeting was necessary and asked if he regretted such an expensive purchase. Nahua smiled and asked Tian if he really thought that such a dog who liner had a chance against him and it was just an illusion. Nahua told Yi Tian to listen to him and ordered him not to try to interfere with Li Xiao anymore because she was his future wife and he loves her. Tian asked what kind of garbage this was and was it really only because of this that he called him there and he hoped that he would offer something worthwhile. Yi Tian told Nahua that it was complete boredom and he started to leave from there and headed towards the exit but Hua asked him to wait there. Hua said that these stones are worth a maximum of 60 million and he was in the minus because he angered him then and this is the end. Nahua ordered Tian to tell him how he would compensate him for these losses, because it was his fault that he lost his money. Yi Tian told Nahua that he himself raised such a price and he did not understand what it had to do with him, because he did not ask him to offer this price for the mineral. Hua told Tian that he forgot that he was a beggar and he could just kneel there and apologize to him seven times and he would forgive him. Yi Tian told Nahua that he did not want a conflict with him because Li Xiao would then worry and he did not want his girlfriend to be nervous. Nahua started laughing and asked Tian what he thought, was he too arrogant for a piece of trash, and how did he talk to him just now? Hua grabbed Tian by the scruff of the neck and asked if he knew that he could just finish him off and all he had to do was say one word. But when Nahua clearly did not expect this, 
Yi Tian struck him with a powerful blow and he flew away from him a couple of meters and began screaming for help. And after the blow, Yi Tian grabbed the mineral that Nahuo won and it gently landed on his palm and he was happy about this event. And immediately after that, Tian squeezed this mineral in his hand and said that with this they could end this conflict if he didn't want problems. Tian crushed this mineral into small particles and Nahua said that he had just destroyed his precious and rare mineral. And then Nahua got scared because he thought, what if the same fate awaits him as this mineral, because this guy was strong. Tian told Hua that he was lucky now, but if he did not tame his snake tongue, he would do the same to him as he did to the mineral. And after that, Yi Tian left the room and saw Hu Liner and Li Zhu standing there together and talking, and they did not understand where he was from. At this time, Mr. Dong asked his man what was with these minerals that Hu Liner asked to keep for her Tian. Mr. Dong asked his man if Tian had received the minerals, but his man said that Mr. Nahua bought them instead of Tian. Mr. Dong was surprised and asked why Nahua bought the minerals and not Tian and what prevented Master Tian from buying these necessary minerals. The assistant told Mr. Dong that Tian did not continue the auction and he also saw him enter the room where this Nahua from the auction was waiting for him. Mr. Don asked his man why and why he even got involved in this business and these trades and immediately ruined all their plans for them. Hu Liner immediately ran to Yi Tian and asked him what happened there and she was worried about him and looked for him everywhere. Tian said that there was nothing special and he just taught Nahua a lesson in good manners and asked Hu Liner to get out of there quickly. Hu Liner listened to Tian and asked him to wait for her there and simply told him that she now had to solve some problem. Hu Liner looked at Nahua and thought that she remembered him and the Hu family would not forgive his heinous act and there was no mercy for it. And immediately after these thoughts, Hu Liner quickly ran from there and Nahua once again asked Li Xiao who this Yi Tian was and where he came from. Li Xiao told Nahua that she would not tell him anything and he should try to find information about him where he usually looks. Nahua thought that Li Zhu was an ungrateful lady and did she really think that he would tolerate her antics and changes all the time? Nahua thought that he would find Yi Tian and then he would get rid of him and not leave the slightest living trace on him and he would be punished. The man approached him and said that he was looking for Nahua, who had purchased minerals from an auction there for 8-10 million money. Nahua asked if it was old man Jiang and what fate they met again and he didn't know that he was worried about some such matters. Old man Chang said that he was there to find out if Nahua was ready to part with one very important thing for him and lose it. Nahua interrupted old man Chang and asked what he was ready to part with and was it really about these beautiful minerals? Chang said that he kept these stones for Master Tian and who could have thought that he would also be interested in this and what is the price of the issue? Nahua asked old man Chang to wait and asked if he was really telling him about this runt Yi Tian and why he was so protective of him. Old man Chang asked Hua what this expression was and how dare he insult Master Tian because he was a very respected master. Hua said that Tian knows how to fight, but this does not make him a master and he is a beggar, such masters can be found anywhere in Injong. Old man Chang got angry and called Hua a fool and asked if he was in his right mind and how dare he say such things and ordered him to shut his mouth. Nahua was very surprised by this reaction and asked old man Chang what made him so angry because he had not yet said anything bad about him. But old man Chang ordered Hua to get away from there and said that their best auction house did not want to deal with the Na family and that was the end. Mr. Don was walking along the corridor at that time and wondering where this old man had gone because he had only walked away for a couple of minutes, but the old man had already disappeared. Hu called old man Chang an idiot and asked how he dares to put restrictions on his family and he is a hundred times better than the larva named Yi Tian. But Mr. Dong stood in front of Nahua and he heard his vile words and became very angry and thought that this impudent guy had crossed the line. And at that very second, suddenly Mr. Dong gave Nahua a powerful slap in the face and Hua was shocked because he did not expect that someone would hit him now. Mr. Dong cursed at Nahua and asked who he was to say such things about Master Tian and told him to shut up and just be quiet. Nahua sat on the floor and told Mr. Dong that he was very sorry to him and he did not know that Master Tian was considered his best friend. But Mr. Dong grabbed Nahua by the scruff of the neck and said that if he insulted Master Tian again, then Li Dong would give him a sweet life. 
Nahua was very scared and told Mr. Dong that he understood his words and this would not happen again and asked him to let him leave from there. Mr. Dong told Hua that he knows that he does not need these minerals and he bought them to annoy Tian and he gives a hundred million for them. Mr. Dong said that he was taking these stones and Hua should quickly get out of there and he and old man Chang would give the stones to Master Tian. After that, Mr. Dong and old man Chang came to Tian's house and Dong found out that this was the Flame Maple Villa and the Hu family gave Yi their treasure. Mr. Dong decided to ring the doorbell and tell Master Tian such good news that he would receive the minerals he needed. Old man Chang looked at the sky and thought that it was incredible and even nature obeys such a strong master as their friend Yi. And at that moment Mr. Don saw a strange and very bright glow in the window of the villa and thought what kind of strange glow there was. Old man Chang also could not explain this phenomenon and asked what kind of magic it was and what was happening inside the house now and how the master was doing. Yi Tian was sitting on the floor in this villa at this time and he was cultivating and thought that he needed to finish cultivating the energy as soon as possible. Master Tian looked at the stone and thought that this heavenly god stone exudes pure magical energy and it is so amazing. But unfortunately, Master Yi Tian realized that he could not absorb it completely yet, and this upset him a little as a cultivator. Tian thought that without a stable qi structure, the absorption process would be unstable and he would not be able to absorb this powerful stone. And at that very second Mr. Dong and old man Chang came into the room and were very surprised and asked the master what had just happened. Master Tian told them that he was just cultivating and asked for their forgiveness and said that he did not want to scare them with this action. Mr. Dong told Master Tian that he didn't have to apologize to them and the master asked them why they came to his villa then. Mr. Don said that he found out that he did not receive the minerals and he tried to find exactly the same ones and this was payment for his help. Master Tian opened the box and noticed that these were the same stones from the auction and wondered if Mr. Dong had taken them from this Nahua. Master Tian said that he was sure that Mr. Dong came to him for a reason and asked him to tell him what happened this time. Mr. Dong smiled and told Master Tian that nothing could be hidden from him and said that he really needed his help again. Mr. Don said that next week there will be a martial arts tournament and every city should send a master there. Mr. Dong said that they could not find someone who would represent their city of Injong and Master Tian asked what about his man San Zi. Mr. Don said that a couple of years ago Sun Zi had no equal, but this is no longer the case and in this tournament you can lose everything you have. Mr. Dong said that he was telling the truth and said that Master Tian is the strongest cultivator of Injong and that is why he is turning to him. Master Tian told Mr. Dong that he was now going through a very important stage of cultivation and so he did not plan to go far. Mr. Dong asked Master Tian not to worry about it and said that it is very close and Mingzhou County is only three hours by car. Master Tian thought about Mingzhou and remembered that this is a good place and whether that freak he knows well, Wang Hao, lives there. The parents begged the man to let their son go and said that they could do anything just so that their son would not get hurt there. The man said that for the sake of his goal he even shed the blood of his father and he thinks that he can offer something more worthwhile than this. My parents sat in front of the grave and said that what a nightmare this was and that this person would pay for all his dirty deeds in the future. Master Tian remembered and became very angry and thought that the Wang family was an echo of his past and he would pay for all his actions. And then Master Tian squeezed the chair on which he was sitting with his hands and it immediately cracked and Mr. Dong stood in shock and realized that the master was powerful. Master Tian took the invitation from Mr. Dong and said that he still agreed to participate there, but only he had one condition. Master Tian asked Mr. Dong to go to Mingzhou and find out as much information as possible about the Wang family and not miss any details. After that, they came to Mingzhou and Master Tian asked Don if there was a martial arts tournament held in this place every year. Mr. Dong told Master Tian that he was completely right and asked him to sit down and wait for the start of this tournament and rest for now. Master Tian asked Mr. Dong where Wang Hao was and he was sure that he would never miss the opportunity to shed someone's innocent blood. Master Tian realized that the people around him and every second fighter there were cultivators and realized that unique battles would take place in this place. And then Master Tian saw the little girl run to the side and his guard asked Miss where she ran and asked her to stand. And at that moment she hit her head on Master Tian's body and realized that she was in a lot of pain and she didn't look at the road when she was running there. 
The girl fell to the ground and told Master Tian to watch where he was going because he looked like a big elephant that was disturbing everyone. Master Tian thought that this girl was so tiny and she was already a cultivator and had great potential and talent. Mr. Dong approached her and asked Miss Xiang not to be rude to their guest and said that he was the one who brought him there to see this competition. But Miss Xiang simply turned away and didn't say anything, and Master Tian wondered if this girl was also participating in a cruel tournament. Mr. Dong approached Master Tian and said that Xiang Qin Qin is the daughter of Huan Shi and she is now in search of her master. And then Master Tian felt something and thought from whom such powerful qi energy comes and this must be a very strong fighter. And at that very second a huge man appeared in front of Master Tian and asked if his name was Yi Tian and he had been looking for him all this time. People at this time pointed their fingers at Huan Ji Qian and all the people asked if he was ashamed to come to this place after the events. The man asked if this young man Master Tian had encroached on the life of his son Song Tian and how dare he raise a hand against his son. The guy approached Master Song and said that the tournament had already begun and he shouldn't start a fight ahead of time and it wasn't necessary. And Mr. Song told Master Tian that he was lucky that they were not in the arena right now and said that he was sure that he would be eliminated in the first round. Mr. Dong asked Master Tian not to pay attention to this man and said that he had no arrogance and was just an idiot. Master Tian told Mr. Dong that everything was fine and all these little annoying midges were not worth his attention and where was the head of Mingzhou. Mr. Dong said that young Master Wang has not come yet, but the American Azure group usually always comes to the tournament. Master Tian thought about it and told Mr. Dong that the Azure group was something familiar to him and he had definitely heard about all these people somewhere. Mr. Dong told Master Tian that of course he knew them and asked if he remembered the scammer Feng Xian and he was also a member of this group. All the girls in this place ran to the arena and said that the first round between Yunzhong and Mingzhou will begin soon and this is interesting. Master Tian thought that they should also take a look at what these fighters could be like and what strong cultivators they were. Mr. Song said that participating in the tournament was dangerous and someone could die so quickly from his blows and the people of Mingzhou were afraid of him. But then suddenly a man from Mingzhou began to appear in front of him and told Mr. Song that he was thinking too much about his strength. And then a fighter appeared in front of him and asked his name was Song Yu Fun and he remembered his name and knew that he was a good and strong fighter. But the man from Mingzhou simply snapped his finger and told Mr. Song that nothing would help him today and he was doomed to fail. And at that very second, Mr. Song felt very painful and he felt the full power of this man from Mingzhou and realized that he had underestimated the guy. Mr. Song fell to the ground with all his might and could no longer continue this fight and his opponent said that he would now die. Tian said that he uses the same techniques as Feng Xiang and is the Azure group and Wang Hao secretly in cahoots with each other. Mr. Dong was very surprised to hear such words from Master Tian and asked what he meant and was interested to know about it. Wang Hao stood proud in the arena and thought that no one could challenge him and then someone told him that he was ready to fight him there. Wang Hao turned around and said that anyone could enter the arena and they would finish this fight faster and he did not intend to bother with him for long. And then Master Tian began to enter the arena and told Wang Hao that his name was Yi Tian and he wanted to find out some information from him. Wang Hao asked if this was the same Yi Tian and said that this arrears Feng Xiang told him about him and he wanted to meet him. Master Tian told Wang Hao that he came there for a reason and asked him what the goals of the Azure group were and what happened to the Wang family. Wang Hao told Yi Tian that he didn't know much and asked for his forgiveness and said that he was not going to tell him anything now. Tian saw black smoke and cold Wang Hao speaks of many lives taken by the cultivator and he, like Feng Xiang, turned off the right path. Wang Hao continued to collect all his dark energy into a single huge ball and told Tian that he would now die from the blow. And immediately after these words, Wang Hao directed his technique towards Master Tian and Tian put up protection against a dark attack in front of him. Wang Hao smiled and said that Master Hao didn't lie when he said that today would be a lot of fun and it's good that he came to the tournament. Master Tian continued to defend himself and ordered Wang Hao to talk about how he is connected with the Azure group and what bad things they are up to. Wang Hao told Master Tian that he had no need to know so much important information and the bastard would soon go to the next world anyway. Wang Hao now began to use his deadly technique and many sharp swords appeared in front of him and it was a dark technique. 
and immediately Wang Hao pointed many swords towards Master Tian and was determined to quickly finish off this arrogant and vile fighter. Master Tian also became angry from the attacks of his enemy and said that then they would talk differently and he would now feel the full fury of his power. Tian began to break all the swords of his enemy and he asked Wang Hao for the last time how he was connected with the Azure group and what their plans were. Wang Hao was surprised whether Master Tian had blocked this blow of his and realized that he needed to gather himself and think about how to attack the fighter. Wang Hao said that the jokes are over and when Master Hao returns from the Tang family, he will not want to hear his explanations and he will finish him off. Master Tian was very surprised by these words and thought about the Tang family and is Wang Hao really dating Tang Xiao and he didn't know that this was possible. Wang Hao began to fly at rapid speed towards his enemy and thought that now nothing would help him and he was simply powerless. And at that very second there was a huge explosion in the arena and all the people were surprised and thought that Master Tian had died after such an attack. Mr. Don began to run to the arena and asked Master Tian how he was feeling and thought that there was no longer any hope that he was alive. But suddenly everyone saw how Yi Tian was not hurt at all and Wang Hao was lying on the ground and Tian put his foot on him and asked about the meeting. Wang Hao simply did nothing and lay on the ground and wondered if he really lost and how Master Tian reflected his famous fighting technique. Tian began to put pressure on Wang Hao and said that the answer was wrong and asked him again where the meeting would take place between these scoundrels. Wang Hao told Master Tian that the meeting between the Hao family and that same Azure group would be held at the Imperial Hotel nearby. Master Tian told Wang Hao that this was the correct answer and said that he was very lucky to fall by his hand and he himself had been waiting for this moment for a long time. Master Tian dealt the final blow to Wang Hao and after that he went to the exit of this arena and thought that he still had a lot to do today. Mr. Dong couldn't believe that Master Tian could so easily defeat such a strong and experienced fighter as Wang Hao and that's cool. Master Tian asked Mr. Dong for forgiveness and said that he had urgent matters and asked him to find a worthy replacement for him. Mr. Dong did not expect such words from Master Tian and he had never seen the master so angry and it seems that Wang Hao made Yi Tian very angry. Master Tian thought about Tang Xiao and realized that this time everything would be different and he would correct all the mistakes he had made in the past. Xiang Qin Qin looked at this fight and thought that Tian was so strong and she wanted him to become her master forever. And after a while, at night, guards stood near the building and guarded the entrance so that no one could get there, but now trouble happened. The guard was told on the phone that Miss Tang was not there and told them to quickly find her because Master Hao cannot be detained and it is dangerous. Master Tian thought about Xiao Er and remembered that she always avoided meeting other families and did not like their attention to her. Master Tian looked at how her guards were running and thought that they didn't know that at night she climbed out through the window to leave. And at that very second Xiao Er herself appeared in the window and she really looked around through the window to make sure that no one was there. Tian watched Xiao Er climb out of the window and remembered that she was such a brave girl that she was not afraid of getting hurt there. And then Master Tian realized that his guard shouldn't see her and began to think about how to distract him so that he would go in the other direction for now. Master Tian took a small stone and threw it at his guard and asked for forgiveness in advance so that he would not be angry for this act. Shuer at that time got out of the house and thought that it was successful as always and all she had to do was not get caught by the guards. Shuer was walking around this place but didn't look at her feet and accidentally stepped on a bush and it broke with a disgusting sound. Shuer froze in place and thought that she would be caught now because she had made a mistake and the guards would understand that she was there. And then Tian appeared in front of her and thought that he recognizes Shuer and she thinks that everything is allowed to her, but she is as clumsy as in the past. Suer saw Master Tian and asked him to be quiet and said that they could come to an agreement but just let him not make too much noise there. Master Tian agreed with Shuer and thought that while he and Xiao Er didn't know each other, he shouldn't put pressure on her and it was too early for this. The guard told his friends that he heard something there and told the two to go there and check what that strange sound was there. Shuer told Tian that she didn't want to go back to them and said that he seemed nice to her and asked if he could help her now. Master Tian told Xiao Er that he would help her without any problems, but he wanted to ask her where they would go, but did not have time to say this until the moment. But Shuer interrupted him and grabbed his hand and ran from there and she said that when the guards come to their senses they will be far away from there. 
Shior thought that she had such a strange feeling that she and this guy had known each other for ages and she knew the person well. Master Tian was very happy and thought that he was finally able to find Shuer and he had long wanted to do this but he never had the time. And after a long run, they stopped and realized that the guards had already fallen behind them and they needed to rest and catch their breath. The girl told Master Tian that her name was Tang Xiao and she thanked him for not refusing and helping her escape from these people. Master Tian shook Tang Xiao's hand and said that his name is Yi Tian and he is also very glad to meet such an interesting lady like her. Master Tian asked his new friend why these people were pursuing her so diligently and what they really needed from her. Tang Xiao said that her family is partly to blame and her father is so cruel with his rules and why can't she be with the one she loves. Master Tian thought that Tang Xiao should stay away from Wang Hao but thought how could he tell her about this and warn her. Tang Xiao said that if she, like Chana, could carefreely rush after the moon, it would be just wonderful and she dreamed. Tian told Tang Xiao that it would be like this and she should only listen to her heart and not listen to other people's words that nothing would work out. Tang Xiao said that it was time to go back and she didn't understand because she had known Yi Tian for a couple of hours, but next to him she felt so good and calm. Her car and her personal driver came for Tang Xiao and Tian told her that one day they would meet again and this could happen soon. Tang Xiao said that she believed that this would happen and thanked him for his help and said that without him, people would have caught her long ago. Master Tian thought that Xiao Er is his light and his future, and he will henceforth be the master of his life and will not let her be offended and will protect her from all enemies. Master Tian walked around his villa and thought about how he was going to protect Xiao Er while he was in the stages of purifying and absorbing Qi. Yi Tian said to himself something weak, that he was too weak and he still needed a lot of time to train to help Lady Shuer. And at that very second, Master Tian took out a family of minerals that Mr. Don brought him and thought that this thing could help a lot. Master Tian thought that he should become stronger and do everything possible for this and not be lazy and continue to plow hard. Master Tian realized that his goal was to become stronger and this was all for the sake of Shuer, and in this state he was vulnerable to attacks from more powerful enemies. Master Tian began to list the names of the constellation and these were constellations such as Dubhi Merak Fida Aliat Mizar and Alcade. All the minerals of Master Tian gathered like these constellations and he realized that they were now positioned correctly and he could begin his development. Master Tian asked the constellation to help him improve because there was very little left to reach the level he wanted and he was close. And suddenly the water in the pool next to the master began to rise on its own and it rushed towards where Master Yi Tian was sitting. All these minerals collected water next to them and they could also act on surrounding objects and their power was very powerful. Master Tian opened his eyes and he felt that drops of water had come to him from somewhere and now he realized that everything went according to plan and was great. Master Tian thought that he was finally at the stage of moving the spirit and saw that this water was swirling next to him. Master Tian thought that now he would be able to sense even someone else's presence and realized that he needed to try to do this now. Master Tian wanted to find someone else's presence and he felt fish, bird and cricket and thought that there was something wrong there and was he really mistaken? Master Tian looked at the tree standing next to him and saw someone silhouette and asked this person who was hiding and ordered him to come out. And at that moment someone fell out of the tree and crashed straight to the ground and Tian wondered why this person had been hiding there for so long. It was Xiang Qin and she was holding her head and saying that she was in a lot of pain and she didn't cut her hair and that's why she fell out of the tree. Master Tian approached Xiang Qin Qin and asked if she was badly hurt and what she was doing there and why she was hiding in that tree. Xiang told Tian that he was stupid and let him look at her and does he really think that falling from such a height from there she was slightly hurt? And then Xiang Qin Qin calmed down and realized that she needed to behave more restrainedly if she did not want the master to kick her out of there. Xiang told Master Tian that at the tournament he showed himself to be the strongest master and therefore she wanted to learn techniques from him. Master Tian thought that the girl had the makings and if not for his movement of the spirit, he would not have been able to notice Yang in this tree. But Tian thought that he would have too many enemies and he really didn't want to create problems for other innocent people. Master Tian thought and told Miss Xiang Qin Qin that he did not take students and asked her to return home because it was already late. Xiang Qin Qin asked what if she generously rewarded Master Tian and took out the box and told the master that there was a hundred million in it. 
But at that moment someone called Master Tian and he was surprised and he definitely didn't expect that it was she who would call him at such a late time. Master Tian asked Wang Zihan what happened and why she was calling him so late and Xiang was wondering who Master Yi was talking to. Wang Zihan told Tian that her mother is inviting him to her birthday tomorrow and she is only calling him because of this event. Shang Rong told Tian that tomorrow their engagement to Zihan would be terminated and he hoped that after that they would never see each other again. Master Tian agreed and said that tomorrow he would be there and told Wang Zihan that if not her mother, then he would have sent her daughter long ago. Wang Zihan wanted to shout at Tian and say that he was a freak, but Tian did not wait for her answer and simply ended the call with his ex. Master Tian told Xiang that he had things to do and would tell her again that he would not be her teacher and asked her to find someone else. Master Tian began to walk on water and it was incredible and his strength was very powerful and now he can even walk on water like a magician. Xiang Qinqin told Master Tian that he really wanted to just leave there and no longer listen to her words and prizes for work. But the girl did not leave and told Master Yi Tian that he would have to take her Xiang Qinqin as his student and it was simply inevitable. The next day, Tian came to his birthday party and thought that today he would say goodbye to Aunt Tang and cut off all ties with Zihan. And then Zihan appeared in front of him along with Shang Rong and said hello to him and this was the most prestigious and expensive hotel in Inzhong. Zihan told Tian that if it weren't for the Shang family, he would have been pushed out of there long ago, but Tian said that he didn't care about all this. Wang Zihan got angry and asked Tian how he dared to talk to her so brazenly and told him not to forget his place and respect her. Shang Rong asked Zihan to just not pay attention to this impudent man and said that he would take care of him himself and he would be scared of him. Inside the building, the head of the Wang family, Wang Guanming, and the lady of the family, Wang Tangqiu, were already standing and they were greeting all the guests at the lady's holiday. Wang Tangqiu saw an acquaintance and told little Tian that she was very glad to see him there and asked him to let the old lady examine him. Tian told the lady that this talisman would protect her from all diseases and he hoped that she would accept it and delight everyone with a smile. Wang Tangqiu thanked little Tian for such a generous gift and said that she really liked it and would carry it with her everywhere. Tian remembered that Aunt Wang was always in poor health and this talisman should strengthen her health and he would figure out about the aura. But then the head of Wang Guanming approached him and asked Tian why he decided to give his wife some dirty stone and that it was bad. But then Tian hit Shang Rong with his shoulder and asked Aunt Tang to accept a gift from him and Zihan and it was a unique elite decoration. People saw this gift and said how beautiful it was and it immediately reminded them of some expensive designer brand and that's cool. Wang Tangqiu told Shang Rong that she was pleased, but he didn't need to spend so much money and could take an example from his friend Yi Tian. Wang Zihan asked her mother why she didn't like the gift because it was from Shang Rong and not from some beggar and poor man. Wang Tanqiu asked her daughter how she could say such things about her husband and Zihan said that this loser would not become her husband. Yi Tian told Aunt Tang that her daughter was telling the truth and she and Zihan were too different and he wanted to dissolve the marriage quickly without delay. Wang Tanqiu was offended when she learned this news and told Yi Tian that during all this time he had already become like her own son to her and she was very offended. Shang Rong asked Tian if he could see how much Mrs. Tang loved him, and of the entire Yi family, only he came as a very ill-mannered idiot. Tian got very angry and asked Shang Rong how dare he say such things about his family and said that he would get what he deserved for this. Shang Rong asked Tian if he didn't like to hear the truth and he was ill-mannered and how could such news be reported on this day. Tian invited Shang Rong to go outside and said that Aunt Tang had better not see what he would do to him now for such impudence. But then Wang Tanqiu asked them to stop screaming and said that her heart ached when she did not expect it and she was in pain. Tian ran up to Wang Tanqiu and told his aunt that he was with her and they were going to the hospital right away to make sure that she had no serious problems. But Zihan told Tian that from now on there was nothing connecting their families and he didn't even have a car and how he wanted to take his mother to the hospital. Shang Rong asked them to stop panicking and said that his driver would arrive there now and take Aunt Tang and that hero Tian was already free. Wang Tanqiu and her daughter went to the exit and she dropped Tian's gift and didn't even notice it because her thoughts were not there. Shang Rong stepped on Tian's gift and said that he thought that there was at least something good in it, 
but he turned out to be a real bastard. Yi Tian broke the table next to him with one touch and told Shang Rong that if he said one more word, the same thing would happen to him. Shang Rong said that it was his table and he had to pay him for it and he was the son of the head of the Wang family and he had no right to touch it there. But Tian did not listen to Shang Rong and wanted to strike a powerful blow so that he would finally shut up because he was already tired of him with his behavior. Tian's hand almost touched Shang Rong's face, but at that moment someone asked Master Tian not to dirty his hands with some scoundrels. It was Xiang Qingqin and she said that she thought that Master Tian did not have to pay for her table and it was just a trifle. Shang Rong asked Miss Xiang Qingqin what she was doing there and Wang Zihan asked him who she was and how he knew her well. Shang Rong told Miss Xiang that this was an ordinary hooligan and he was creating problems for everyone there and now he would just kick this hooligan out. Shang Rong ordered his people to take Tian and said that he ruined the whole holiday today and they will now throw him out into the street from there. But suddenly Xiang kicked Shang Rong in the butt and told him to just stop pretending to be someone and said she would suit him now. Shang Rong fell to the ground and told Miss Xiang Qin Qin that he was actually her cousin and why was she treating him like that now. But Xiang slapped Shang Rong in the face and asked him not to disgrace the name of his family and to better kneel down and beg Master Tian for help. Wang Zihan was angry and asked people who let this child in there and why she did not respect her elder cousin and was a scoundrel. Shang Rong asked Zihan to immediately apologize to her and Xiang is the only daughter of Huan Shi and she cannot be spoken to in such a tone. Shang Rong knelt in front of Miss Xiang Qing Qin and asked her to just not be angry with them and said that he apologizes to her for everything. Xiang simply turned away and left from there, and Wang Zihan thought how she could be attracted to this slug who was now kneeling. Xiang Qingqin approached Tian and told the master that his student was a little late and it was very difficult for her to find him in this place. But Master Tian asked the Xiang girl to stop talking like that because she is not his student and he already told her yesterday that he would not be her master. Zihan was surprised and thought why this girl calls Tian her master and did they really know him before that day? The man approached Zihan and asked why she was standing there and she should quickly apologize to her and introduce her father to her. Wang Zihan didn't want to do this and asked the man why she should apologize to this impudent little girl. But the man started shouting at Zihan and asked her not to contradict him and said that his business depended on it and she should be polite. The man said that he did not think that the daughter of Huan Shi himself and her master would come to his banquet and was glad to see them together. Tian smiled and said that Uncle Wang would no longer laugh at his gift to Aunt Wang, because before that he was just crazy about it. Zihan told Tian that Miss Qin Qin rarely comes to Yinzhong and could she ask him for something once they know each other well? Tian asked Zihan what kind of good relationship she was talking about and maybe she forgot how she said yesterday that she wanted to annul their marriage. Wang Zihan started screaming and told Tian that she would tell her mother everything and he would get in trouble and she would no longer believe him. But Yi Tian got angry and then the glass in the hands of Mr. Wang Guanming broke and he was shocked and realized that Master Tian is very strong. Master Tian said that he warns Wang Zihan and her father Wang Guanming not to disturb Aunt Tang under any circumstances. Xiang Qin Qin asked if they weren't ashamed and maybe they would leave from there, otherwise she would get very angry if they continued to pester the master. Wang Guanming said that he and Wang Zihan were already leaving and he wanted Miss Xiang Qin Qin not to worry and they were already on their way. Mr. Wang Guanming asked Shang Rong to get up and said that it was time for them to leave from there and he told Mr. that he was already getting up from the floor. After that, Tian went outside and thought that so many events had just happened in this place, although he just came for the holiday. Master Tian felt that without the seventh mineral his qi would dry up very quickly and he needed to quickly develop his skills and his qi. Xiang said that the Fida is like the Taoist spirit star and if he somehow loses it and the qi leaves him and all seven stars complement themselves. Xiang Qingqin said that without the latter, all efforts were in vain and Tian was surprised and asked her how she knew all the information. Xiang said that she, like Tian, was training in the villa and his method of cultivation seemed familiar to her and she was very interested. Xiang Qingqin told Tian that that's why she looked through her grandfather's entire collection at home and it's a pity that his notes weren't finished. Tian thought that it turns out that the Xiang family preserved very rare and some cultivation methods and that is why it was strong. Xiang Qingqin told Tian that she would help him find a replacement for that mineral if he agreed to become her master and that would be good. 
Tian told Xiang that it was a good offer but he asked her to give him some time and he needed to think before answering. Xiang was surprised and asked Tian what he should think about and it was the best deal because it made her feel good and it felt good for him too. Tian asked Xiang Qin Qin what if she was deceiving him and how could he immediately agree to such proposals from such a stranger. Xiang Qin Qin said that she thought that Master Tian was simpler and said that she was not lying to him, but she needed to prove it so that he would believe it. Xiang Qin Qin said that then she would have to prove her words and asked the master to look at this thing and immediately took out something. Tian asked if it was the spirit of the beast and Xiang said that it was a piece of stipendamese shell and had the master heard about these cute turtles. Xiang said that the records say that they eat jade and their shells are full of bronze coins and they accumulate qi energy. Tian just found out about this and said that it means stupendemisa can be used instead of the last stone and this is a great thing. Xiang Qinqin asked Master Tian if he was happy now because she told him everything that she herself knows and believes the master. Tian asked Xiang to stop calling him master and said that he needed this turtle and then he could complete his development. Xiang told the master that then together they would quickly catch this dependemies and she would help the master implement all his plans. Tian said that he wanted to go on the search himself so as not to endanger her life and said that he was still not her master. And then a guy came up to them and told Qin Qin that such little girls should not walk alone at night and he said that he was her cousin. Tian thought that this guy did not fit into the mighty Shang clan and he must be their distant relative but promising. Xiang told Shang Ming that he was just in time and that he and Master Tian needed a car to get to the Lake of Worries together on business. Shang Ming immediately realized that if they wanted to go to the Lake of Anxiety, then they were looking for stipendamies and said that he would be happy to help them. But Xiang Qin Qin told Shang Ming that even if she had nine lives, she would not trust him and Tian will help her in this quest. Shang Ming told Master Yi Tian that he would never have thought that he was so young and said that nothing can be done with uniqueness. Tian told Shang Ming that all his strength was aimed only at cultivation and development and realized that he did not like his courtesy. Shang Ming told Xiang that her uncle said that in two years he would hand over the family business to her and hoped that then she would not forget about her cousin. Xiang Qin Qin told Master Tian that it was a long way to get to the Lake of Anxiety so that he could rest and gain strength to search for creatures. Shang Ming thought that Xiang Qin Qin was so polite to this master and apparently he was really strong in cultivation and it was interesting. Shang Ming got behind the wheel and thought that he didn't care about this next cultivator and he couldn't cope with such people and was confident in himself. A few hours later they arrived at the lake and it was very quiet there and nothing interfered with their search at such a calm time at night. Xiang Qin Qin got out of the car and pointed her finger at the lake and told Master Tian that she found that piece of beast in this lake. Master Tian realized that this lake was quite large and he thought and suggested that they split up and so they could expand the search area. Shang Ming told Qin Qin that she would go with him as his uncle told him to protect her and always be by her side everywhere. Master Tian listened to Shang Ming and said that then he would go alone and immediately start looking for these turtles to complete the development of strength. After that, they separated and went to their places and Tian realized that he was not scared at all and they would quickly find this turtle. Shang Ming told Qin Qin that he himself could catch stipendamis and asked why she then called Master Tian with them on this search. Qin Qin asked Shang Ming what these questions were and Tian was her master and if he is so smart, he should catch the turtle himself. Shang Ming told Qin Qin that he understood her and said that he was only worried about her, which is why he so often asks her questions about everything. Shang Ming thought that Stipendamis loves energy-filled jade and decided to put one of these in the pocket of this master Yi Tian. Shang Ming thought that this master Tian was interfering with him and he hated him and therefore wanted to get rid of him so that he would not interfere with him. Shang Ming thought that even if Master Tian did not die and was very seriously injured, it would still be in his favor and he would be happy. Shang Ming thought that Master Tian was just a pawn in his game and it was in vain that he met Xiang Qin Qin and now he will die very soon. All of them continued their search at this time and Xiang Qin Qin asked Shang Ming why the earth was shaking and whether he felt these shakes there. Master Tian noticed that a huge silhouette of a turtle began to appear there and realized that this was Stipendamis and it was huge. And at that moment a huge turtle jumped out in front of them and Tian asked Xiang Qin Qin to take care of herself and there was such a danger in front of her. 
Xiang Qin Qin stepped aside and told Master Tian that it was the same stipendamis and asked him to catch this turtle. The turtle began to move towards Xiang Ming and he asked Xiang to attack this huge monster from the back and then they would catch him. Xiang Min realized that he had a very strong tail and it's good that he still managed to bounce off and the turtle's tail would definitely crush Master Yi. They began to tie up the turtle and Xiang Ming said that now they will see how he jumps and Xiang asked Xiang to call Master Yi. Xiang Ming told Qin Qin that now he would call him and thought that she could not worry and he would call Tian and he would meet death. And then Xiang Ming ran to Master Tian and asked the master to go with him and said that he and Qin Qin had now found this dependamis. Tian asked Xiang Ming where Qin Qin was and he said that she sent him for him and she stayed behind to hold the turtle so as not to miss him. Master Tian told Xiang Ming that then they should go there as soon as possible and help Qin Qin and Xiang Ming told him thank you. And at that moment, Xiang Ming pressed himself against Master Tian and put a jade ball in his pocket and thought that he couldn't wait. Master Tian came and told Qin Qin that such strong-willed creatures are very rare on earth and it was interesting. Xiang Qin Qin continued to hold the turtle and asked the master if he could see him and said that she did not deceive him and was right. Xiang Ming asked Qin Qin to rest and said that he and Master Tian themselves would now deal with this impudent huge turtle. Xiang Qin Qin released the grip and told the master that this was their chance and he should now attack the turtle together with Xiang Ming. Xiang Ming smiled and thought that this was really his chance, and Master Tian told Qin Qin that Stipendamis was a water elemental. And at that very second, Stipendamis broke Xiang Ming's grip and began to scream with all his might and was very angry at all the people attacking him. Stipendamis wanted to bite Master Tian but he dodged his mouth and Xiang Ming sat on the ground and just watched Yi Tian's battle. The Stipendamis turtle continued to attack Master Tian and he thought what was wrong with this turtle and why is it aggressive. Xiang Min stood up and told the master that he would help him, and fiery rays immediately began to emerge from his hand and directed them at the monster. But Xiang Min almost hit Master Tian with his attack and he wondered if Xiang Min was specifically aiming at him and wanted to finish him off. The turtle began to shoot at Master Tian with his beam and Xiang Ming told the master that it seemed that Stipendamis was calming down a little. Master Tian managed to dodge the turtle's ray and he found himself behind a huge monster and thought that he was now safe there. But at that very second, Master Tian froze in surprise and realized that he was mistaken and had just made a huge mistake that he regrets. And at that moment Stipendamis dealt a powerful blow to Master Tian with his tail and the master realized that this monster had a lot of power. From such a blow, Master Tian crashed into a tree and then suddenly a ball of jade fell from his pocket and it rolled to the side. And then this ball split into two and Master Tian saw it and thought it was really jade, but how did it end up in his pocket? And immediately after this, the huge turtle calmed down and no longer wanted to finish off Master Tian but just calmly looked at him. Master Tian realized that it was coming out because of the jade, Stipendamis got so excited and then he understood everything and thought that it was a cunning plan. Master Tian was angry and thought that this cowardly bastard would immediately answer him for this act and there would be no mercy. Master Tian pointed his finger at Xiang Ming and said that he would answer for angering the immortal and now he would feel all the pain. Xiang Ming was very scared and asked Master Tian what he was talking about and he knew nothing about it and asked the master to have mercy on him for everything. Master Tian approached Xiang Ming and asked him to tell him where he got this jade in his pocket and how it got there recently. Xiang Ming made a pitiful face and told Master Tian that he didn't know how it got into his pocket and maybe Tian didn't remember and put it himself. Qin Qin said that she saw Xiang Ming at the auction and asked if he was going to frame the master and why it was necessary. Xiang Ming stood in bewilderment and realized that his plan had been figured out and he began to think that now he could tell them but they would not believe him. And then Xiang Ming directed fiery power towards Master Tian and said that the stipendamis should go to him and no one else. Master Tian told Xiang Ming that he had a lot of courage, but he said that the one who crossed his path last time got hurt. Master Tian sent his power towards Xiang Ming and he asked if he wanted to know what happened to the person who harmed him. Master Tian threw this jade at Xiang Ming and he said that this could not be because this jade stuck to him and could not be pulled out. And after that, Stipendamis began to approach Xiang Ming and he defended himself and thought why the turtle was now so strong. Master Tian smiled and told Xiang Ming that it was all thanks to his jade and now he would not be able to hold off this aggressive turtle. 
Shang Ming could not continue to defend himself and stipendamis began to approach him and Shang Ming began to scream and ask for help. Shang Ming began to think and thought that perhaps in the lake he would have a better chance of surviving and he should do it now. Shang Ming jumped into the lake and began to dive into the depths and thought that there the turtle would not be as dangerous and aggressive as on land. Shang Ming told Master Tian that he underestimated him and if he defeated this turtle, sooner or later he would find a master. Xiang Qin Qin was very angry and thought how such a loser could be born in her strong family and told the master that she would catch up with him. But Master Tian asked Xiang Qin Qin to stand and asked if she wanted to know what he was capable of and asked Xiang to look at it. Master Tian began to cast a spell and a huge sword appeared there and the master spoke about the ascension of Yin and Yang and about the five seasonal elements. Master Tian continued to cast his spell and talked about the change of seasons and the triumph of harmony and balance, and Xiang expected something from him. Xiang Qin Qin looked at all this and realized that Master Tian was so strong, and before she doubted his strength and was mistaken. Master Tian created a huge sword and pointed it at that huge monster Stipendamis and realized that this should be enough for her. Master Tian hit Stipendamis with his sword and finished him off and asked Shang Ming to come back and said that he knew that he was alive. Master Tian finished off a huge turtle in one blow and it immediately floated to the top of the lake and no longer showed any signs of life. Shang Ming lay on the shell of the Stipendamis and told Master Tian that he could do whatever he wanted with him because he was not afraid of him anyway. Master Tian came to Shang Ming and asked if he could kill him and said that this was too little for such a scoundrel Ka Shang. Master Tian began to hurt Shang Ming and said that a villain like him should fall next to the beast and that was his fate. Master Tian told Xiang Qin Qin that he would spare Shang Ming and he asked her to deal with the Shang family and then inform him about it. Qin Qin approached the master and said that he was too kind to such a scumbag as Shang Ming and he deserved more punishment. And at that very second, Qin Qin took out the ball and told Master Tian that she would use it if he now took her as his student. Shang Ming told Qin Qin to ask the master to let him go and said that in her childhood he always helped her out and saved her from everything. Qin Qin told Shang Ming that Master Tian did everything right, but she would deal with him herself and come up with her own punishment for him. Qin Qin said that Shang Ming has two options and the first is that she will tell his father everything and he will no longer escape punishment. Qin Qin has not yet said about the second option, but Shang Ming said that he chooses the second because it should be better than the first option. Qin Qin said that the second option is expulsion from the Shang family and told the master that if he is not from their family, then they can leave him. Master Tian said that he no longer wanted to see Shang Ming and he asked Qin Qin to go and prepare if she became his disciple. Qin Qin was very happy and asked the master if he really agreed and it was cool and she became a student of Master Tian himself. Qin Qin grabbed Master Tian's hand and said that they need to go quickly and choose a time for classes so that they can start everything faster. Master Tian ran with Qin Qin and thought how Shui was doing there because he hadn't seen her for several days and missed her very much. After that, Master Tian and Xiang Qin Qin came to his flame maple villa and had to set up a training schedule with her. They entered the villa and suddenly Hu Liner met them there and asked Tian where he was and said that she could not find him anywhere. Hu Liner saw the girl and asked if it was little Xiang and if she was still plotting against Yi Tian and what she needed there. Qin Qin said was it really Hu Liner and asked what she forgot in front of her master's house and what she herself needed from the master there. Hu Liner and Xiang Qin Qin looked at each other angrily and Yi Tian just stood aside and he did not understand anything what was happening there. Qin Qin told Liner that she had proven that she could become his worthy disciple and did not just follow him everywhere like Liner. Tian told Qin Qin that he would take this core from her and they would discuss training points once he finished his cultivation soon. Hu Liner was shocked by this and asked Master Tian if he really took Qin Qin as his disciple and why he agreed to this. Qin Qin told Master Tian that of course she agreed with him and said that she would come to him in a couple of days after his cultivation. Tian told Hu Liner that Qin Qin was haunting him and giving him gifts and he had no choice but to study. Hu Liner told Master Tian that now she understood everything and asked him if she could also become his student and work seriously. Qin Qin was surprised and asked Hu Liner how she dared to ask the master about this so brazenly and said that she was a real impudent person. Liner told her that people are not judged by themselves and she wanted to study with Tian since he healed her and thought that then they would get closer. 
Chin Chin asked Hu Liner if she couldn't come up with anything smarter and said that she just wanted to butter up Master Tian. Hu Liner told Chin Chin that this was not true and she was very wrong in her guesses and she also wanted to develop and become stronger. Chin Chin told Hu Liner that she helped the master obtain the stipendamese core to become his student and asked what she did. Hu Liner said that she knows her worth and told Master Tian that he wanted to meet Wang Hao at the martial arts tournament. Master Tian agreed with Hu Liner and told her that he hated him and wanted him to become kinder because he always harmed good people. Hu Liner told Master Tian that grandfather asked him to tell him that he was planning to marry a girl from the Tang family and he was shocked. Hu Liner said that then he wants to take over her assets and money and leave this girl without a single cent and her business. Master Tian was furious and said that Wang Hao is a scumbag and he never understood his actions and he will soon teach him good manners. Qin Qin was surprised and wondered why the master was so angry when he learned that some unknown girl was getting married soon. Hu Liner held Tian and asked him not to go anywhere and listen to her and said that she had a lot more information about this Wang Hao. Master Tian asked Hu Liner to let him go and said that it was time for him to come out of the shadows and show all these scoundrels his anger and rage. Hu Liner told Tian that she doesn't know what's going on between them, but if he goes there, the Tang family will end and that's definitely a fact. Tian told Hu Liner that he just wanted to get them out of Wang Hao's hands and thought that he actually wanted to save sweet Tang Xiuer. Qin Qin said that they have another way and they should try to help Master Tian solve this problem with Wang Hao. Hu Liner told Qin Qin that their families could not help in any way and they were nothing compared to Wang Hao and could not help the master in any way. Hu Liner told Master Tian that he would understand how terrible Wang Hao is if he met him once and he was a very bad person. Master Tian hit the tree and told Hu Liner that he already knew who Wang Hao really was, but they needed to protect the Tang family. Master Tian said that if Wang Hao was the most dangerous beast on the entire planet, he would not retreat and would go to the end and break this scoundrel. After that, they came to the building and Hu Liner told Master Tian that Director Tang was looking for guards for his daughter and she offered him. Liner told Tian that this place was infested with spies of the Wang family and because of this, it was better for her not to linger there and Tian understood Liner's situation. Tian entered the building and the man told Director Tang that a guy recommended by the Hu family had arrived and the director asked him to come in. Director Tang sat on his desk and told Master Yi Tian that he was finally there and he was glad to see him and the Hu family praised him very much. Director Tang shook Master Tian's hand and said that he trusted him with sewer safety and the master said that he would do everything without any problems. And at that very second Tang Xiao appeared in the room and when she saw Tian, she recognized him and said that then she was definitely in good hands and protected. Tang Xiao asked her father how he managed to find her savior because she already knew this man and a couple of days ago the guy helped her a lot. And then the director heard his man outside the door begging to leave his children and he was the driver and someone said that it was all the director's fault. Director Tang asked Tang Xiao and Master Tian to hide in the closet together and not give themselves away to Wang Hao and not come out until the signal. Director Tang went to the door and asked that no matter what happened there, not make a sound and sit quietly in the closet and wait for his arrival. Director Tang left the room and saw Wang Hao standing there and his driver asked the director to help him with one obvious problem. Director Tang told Wang Hao to tell him what happened to the children of his faithful driver and he wanted to hear a sincere answer now. Wang Hao smiled and told Director Tang that the driver's children had become the target of the Azure group and their souls were very helpful in cultivation. Director Tan told the driver that he could not comply with his request and would do everything in his power to save the children and return them home. Director Tan asked the driver to go home now and calm down and the driver thanked the director for not refusing him. And then Wang Hao called someone and said that he had a child there for him and he could do whatever he wanted with them and no one would mind. The driver was surprised and asked Wang Hao because he promised to let his children go, but he did not fulfill his promise and was a vile liar and a coward. Wang Hao told the driver that he was probably stupid and said that these were just empty words and he believed them like a naive baby. And then Tang Xiao shouted and asked how dare he do this to Uncle Lu and said that she no longer intended to tolerate this impudence. But Master Tian covered her mouth with his hand and asked her to be a little quieter because her father asked him to keep an eye on his beloved daughter. And then Master Tian hugged Tang Xiao and said that he lives for Yi Tian only to protect her and does not want Tang Xiao to get hurt. 
Master Tian asked Tang Xiao not to move or make sound so that Wang Hao would not know that they were in this room and for now she was safe. Master Tian told Tang Xiao that he would let her go if she promised him not to scream anymore and she agreed with the master and nodded. Master Tian immediately let her go and thought that Shuer might not understand this for now, but he doesn't want to harm her and wants to save her as soon as possible. They, master Tian told Tang Xiao that they would talk after Wang Hao arrived and if he entered this room he would regret this decision. Director Tang at this time asked Wang Hao what he should still do so that he would leave his family and other people alone. Wang Hao sat on the chair and asked if the director really wanted him to leave them alone and said that he would never leave what he wants. Wang Hao told the director that he wants to get his daughter as well as his company and all the workers and that's all he wants to get. Director Tang listened to Wang Hao's conditions and said that then it would be easier to just kill him and said that he would never give him all this. Wang Hao said that the life of the old man is not interesting to him and he can finish off Director Tang without any problems when he gets tired of talking. And at that second a woman appeared in the room and told Mr. Wang Hao that one person from the Azure group was waiting for him at this time. Wang Hao sat and listened to the woman and she asked him to follow her and said that she herself would take him to that person from the group. Wang Hao hugged the woman and said that he couldn't refuse such a beauty and she said that Mr. Wang is such a daring man. Wang Hao called director Tang an old man and said that he would not tolerate him forever and said that he would give him one month to respond. Wang Hao turned around and told Director Tang that upon expiration of the deadline, he would kill his entire family if he did not get his desired item. Director Tan felt bad from these words and he thought that he could not give him everything he was asking for and he needed to find another solution. Tang Xiao asked her father not to despair and said that she had thought about everything clearly and for their sake she agreed to be with Wang Hao and stop him. Director Tang said that Wang Hao is the devil in the flesh and she will not live if she marries him and he does not allow her to do so. But Tang Xiao told her father that in this case Wang Hao would get to all of them and would not give anyone a normal life and would even finish them off. Tang Xiao told her father that this is not possible and they should not forget their roots and the people who helped them reach heights and think about themselves. Master Tian at this time thought why he was so weak because he was reborn again to change everything but he simply does not have enough strength. Master Tian asked Director Tang and Tang Xiao to forgive him and said that he was not strong enough and therefore could not help them yet. Director Tang told Master Tian that this was fate and they should accept it and thanked Master Tian for trying for them. Master Tian said that he was hurt by Miss Tang's words and wanted to take her away from there, but then he found out how concerned she was about the lives of all their workers. Master Tian approached Tang Xiao and said that, unfortunately, now he would not be able to fight Wang Hao and their forces were too unequal at this moment. Tang Xiao asked Tian not to embarrass her and said that in any case, he deserved their gratitude and her heart began to beat wildly. Master Tian realized that there were about 50 cultivators accumulated on the 30 floors of this building and they could greatly harm them. Master Tian told Director Tang that there were a lot of spies in this building and asked him to let him hide Tang Xiao from these people. Master Tian directed his energy at her and told Director Tang that they would not be able to find her for one month even with the help of martial arts. Director Tan said thank you to the master for such help, but asked what they could do with the enemies later and what they should do after. Master Tian told Director Tang that he swears that later he Yi Tian will come and save them and during this time he will become stronger than the enemies. At this time, masters Hu Liner and Xiang Qin Qin were sitting and waiting in Yi Tian's villa, and they were wondering what Tian had done with these enemies. Qin Qin asked Hu Liner how she thought her master met with Wang Hao and she said that it was possible because he was so angry. Hu Liner was surprised and asked Qin Qin why she calls Yi Tian her master because they only recently met him. Qin Qin told Liner that Tian promised that he would take her as a student, but several days had already passed and she was wondering where he was now. And at that very second master Yi Tian entered the room and Liner and Qin Qin told the master that they were glad to see him and what happened in the end. Yi Tian told the ladies that they should urgently head to Inzhou and not waste a single second, and he would explain everything to them on the way. Qin Qin approached Master Tian and asked if he really wanted to start a war with the Wang family and asked if he had thought about his actions. Hu Liner told Master Tian that this Wang family owned many of Minzhou's resources and they could not compare with them and they were stronger. Yi Tian said that then they would ask for help and said that he just had to defeat them and not let them ruin the innocent Tang family. 
Qin Qin thought and told Master Tian that by the way, her father told her that the dragon catchers would arrive in two days and she remembered this. Yi Tian was very surprised when he heard about the dragon catchers and asked his student Qin Qin who they were and they were strong and he didn't know it. Qin Qin told Master Tian that the dragon catchers are the strongest people in the country and the main competitors of the Azure group in terms of power. Qin Qin reported that her father also told her that they needed a mentor and she could recommend Master Tian for this position. Master Tian thought that the Azure group had a conflict with the hunters and the enemy of his enemy was his friend and they could become allies with them. Master Tian told Qin Qin that then he would bother her a little and she said that without any problems the master could rely on her help. After this, Yi Tian and Xiang Qin Qin came to one place and the master suggested that it seemed that those same dragon catchers had gathered there. Master Tian saw two guards at the entrance to the building and realized that these two had such a powerful aura and were strong fighters. Qin Qin asked the master to come with her and she would tell her father that she had found the master and he would be glad to hear such news from her. The man told Miss Xiang Qin Qin that she had returned and said that the old master was already waiting for her and wanted to talk to her privately now. Qin Qin greeted the man and asked him to take Master Tian to the living room of the dragon catchers and he agreed with the young miss. The man asked them to follow him and said that they need to go a little more to meet the dragon catchers in this building. Master Tian thought that there must be many dragon catchers there and he wanted to personally communicate with them and find out how strong they are. The man led Master Tian to the door and said that he could go into the room where the dragon catchers were waiting for him and he could talk there. Master Tian noticed that there was some strange symbol on this door, but it seemed to him a familiar and interesting symbol. Master Tian was surprised and thought that these were the same six star formation lights and who were those same dragon catchers. And at that moment the symbol began to change and Master Tian thought that this was very strange and the symbol changed its figure and changed its figure. And then the symbol transformed into sharp swords and they began to fly straight at Master Tian and he thought what this should mean after all. Master Tian realized that dragon catchers are not the most friendly people and they prepared such a sudden surprise for their young guest. Master Tian immediately directed his beam towards these flying swords and thought that this should be enough to protect himself from these swords. But the swords did not stop and their shape only changed, but they continued to fly towards him without stopping and he realized that this was interesting. Yi Tian realized that the chaotic formation only confirmed all his guesses and the enemy was strong and he must be prepared for such attacks. Master Tian immediately put up a defense in front of himself and all these swords flew to his defense and only after that they exploded and disappeared. After that, a woman came out of Master Tian's room and said that it was excellent and old man Shang was not mistaken with this recommendation. After her, an elderly man came out to Master Tian and said that he understood that he had attracted his attention and they did not want to offend him. Master Tian asked them if they really tested him and thought how they dared to do this and did he look like some kind of beginner. The woman said that she was the elder of the Zhong Dai Dai Dragon Catcher group and told Master Tian that they were selecting true people. Zhong Dai Dai told Tian that it was not often that such a strong cultivator could be found, so she went a little overboard with it. Yi Tian said that he understood from but asked to be more careful next time and said that you can get burned by testing an expert. Zhong Dai Dai said that the dragon catchers are the best group in this country, but they also have many enemies, and so the leader sent her to search. Zhong Dai Dai said that they were looking for the most talented people and asked Tian if he wanted to become the mentor of their elite team. Their emblem reminded Tian of a magical treasure and realized that until he regained all his strength, he could afford to enter there. Master Tian told Zhong Dai Dai that he agreed to become a mentor but only he had some conditions to help them. Zhong Dai Dai said that the Azure group with Wang Hao are together and they are terrorizing the Tang family and Tian came there precisely because of this. Master Tian told Zhong Dai Dai that she said everything correctly and he was pleased to talk to an intelligent person who knows everything. Zhong Dai Dai told Tian that with this emblem, he would be able to control the Tiger Dragon team and he could get down to business. Master Tian looked at the fighters and realized that this was not bad and their cultivation level was low but this was enough to fight Wang. Zhong Dai Dai told the master that these people would not ask him unnecessary questions and now his personal team obeys him. Master Tian was happy and told Zhong Dai Dai that he liked everything and they would work together and it was a great gift for him. 
Zhong Dai Dai told Master Tian that it was great and threw him the emblem of their group and said that they were glad that he was with them. Master Tian caught the emblem and asked Boss Zhong Dai Dai when they would leave to complete the mission and defeat their enemies. But some guy suddenly appeared there and told Zhong Dai Dai that she was mistaken and Tian was an ordinary person with no skills. The guy began to approach them and asked Master Tian if he really believed that he was worthy of being a mentor to such strong fighters of the group. Master Tian was surprised and asked Zhong Dai Dai if this was another test of a group of dragon catchers and he was ready. Zhong Dai Dai said that this is the old mentor of the tiger dragon group Gong Yenhan and he recently joined the blood dragons. Master Tian looked at Gong Yenhan and realized that qi was flowing through his veins, but he did not use the most suitable formation method. Yi Tian told Gong Yenhan that he is strong but has a bad character and this has always prevented him from achieving greater heights in life. Gong Yenhan asked Yi Tian who was going to criticize him and what he himself had achieved in his life, that he spoke like an experienced guru. Gong Yenhan told little Tian that they were not happy with him and maybe he should go back to his mother and go to bed rather than think that he is a hero. Zhong Dai Dai was furious and asked Gong Yenhan to stop acting like an idiot and stop being rude to Master Tian and better get out of there. But Gong Yenhan pushed Zhong Dai Dai's hand away and told her to close her mouth and remember how she herself took this place and how she rose in work. Gong Yenhan said that he would tell her about it and said that Zhong was just attracted by her pretty face and her career immediately began to improve. Gong Yenhan told Tian that in order to become a mentor you need experience and not a pretty appearance and Zhong told him to get out of there. Master Tian removed Gong Yenhan's hand from his shoulder and told him to roll and not come back there again and he didn't want to talk to that idiot. Gong Yenhan began to prepare for a fight and Zhong Dai Dai asked him not to do this and he risked angering her, which she did not advise him to do. Yi Tian said that he did an excellent job in the first test and the second time he is not going to stand idle and the impudent person will be punished. 